So, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is story about what if Naruto neglected by family and trained by Hashirama. Part 1. If you guys enjoy this, what if? And want next part? Let me know before starting the video, comment down below. Please support for more awesome what if content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So without wasting time. Let's start the video. The loud roar echoed through the village as a huge fox with nine swishing tails. Its fur a dark bloodish red and its eyes, its powerful blood red pupils with black slits that can stare deep into your soul, glared down upon the mortals that were scampering and running. Its claws as sharp as any blade slashed and cut through buildings crushing any and all in its way. It's Kaiubi. Quickly warned the Hakage one of the ninja screamed whilst running to the Hakage tower. The rest of the village had taken notice of the raging Biju approaching them, as shinobi were readying themselves for the onslaught. A small part of their forces were caring for the civilians and sending them to the shelters. Minato was nowhere to be found as the forces were gathering only for the shinobi no kami hears in Suratobi to appear. Sande Masama, the gates have been destroyed, and the Kaiubi has entered the village perimeter, what are your orders? A random question. Everyone under Jonin must pull back to the shelters we need to make sure that the civilians stay safe. Here is an ordered. The Inanbu shall attack the beast and stall it which will give us time so we can seal it again. Hi, they shouted. Now go stated Hiruzen as the ninja scattered. Or. Go find Minato, the rest of you follow me. They charged as the other shinobi jumped up to the rooftops and skidded towards the Ninetales. Almost half of the village fell to the rampaging beast, corpses of villagers, and ninjas littered the streets as they passed them. Thousands were fired at the fox which was starting to annoy him. Arg. You filthy humans. Kaiubi roared as it slashed its claws towards the ground, crushing many shinobi under his mighty paws. Fire style. Great Firestorm Fugaki shouted as he and his clansmen all launched blazes of fire at the same time causing the flames to form a tsunami of raging fire as it roared itself to the fox. Athetic Achiha Kurama laughed and with a swish of a tail the fire disappeared. He then unleashed his massive chakra sending those that attacked him flying a few feet. He was about to form a Bijidama when suddenly the Uzumaki ceiling chains rose from the ground and began to bind him. He was pushed to the ground as he struggled greatly to break free. What? These chains. Could it be? Kashina. The fox roared in anger. Not really a little kid, Kari Uzumaki teased, making the fox look down upon her. You. Kaiubi roared. I'm surprised you remember me kidling. It's me, Kari Uzumaki, now be a good foxy and sit there like a good boy, so can we seal you up again. How dare you treat me the mighty Kaiubi like a sniveling little child, he snarled letting out a roar. And you can forget about sealing me. No seal can hold me. Kari Uzumaki. Saratobi summoned Enma as the Monkey King turned into the adamantine staff as he had it enlarged and struck the beast in the head. Quickly I stunned it for a short minute, use your strongest hand on it. The shinobi nodded as they began to go through hand signs as they unleashed fire style, water style, earth style, even lightning style at the fox, causing a little damage. Hiruzen was about to use his when a flash of yellow appeared next to him. It was none other than Minato Namikaze, the Yandame Hakage. Minato where have you been? Don't you know that we are being attacked by the Kaiubi? Hiruzen demanded. Your sister and law can barely hold on with their chakra chains. The Yandane chuckled I was with my wife, she was having our children, I'm finally a father he said before getting serious. Until that masked man came in and ripped the fox out of my wife. Har interrupted him, Minato, as much as I want to hear the rest of your story, we have more important matters at the moment. She screamed as her chakra chain suddenly failed as one of the fox's massive paws got free and swung at her as she was immediately crushed by him. Minato gasped as Hiruzen quickly reminded him that the Kaiubi is almost close to the center of the village and that the only hope that we have now is to seal it. The Yandane knew that there was only one seal powerful enough to hold the Nine Tails, the Reaper Death Seal. They're right Hiruzen-sama and I will be using the Reaper Death Seal to seal the Nine Tails into my children, but I'll separate the fox to ensure it can't break out. Minato said with a pained look on his face. I can't ask anyone else to sacrifice their child if I can't do the deed myself. Minato let me do the sealing, Hiruzen replied, shocking Minato. I have lived a long life and you're still young. The village needs you now. He said with a smile. The only thing I ask you is to keep your children safe and treat them all equally. On Hagakur Hospital, Minato flashed back to his wife who was with their children. With a heavy heart he told her that he was going to seal the nine tails into their children to save the village. As always Kashina forbade it as she didn't want her children to suffer the fate of being a Ashina Chan I don't want to do this, but I have no choice, the village will fall if I don't seal the fox away. Minato said sadly but firmly. Please Kashina, it's for the best, surely you understand. Minato used me to seal the nine tails. You know the hardships faced. I wouldn't wish that upon my children. 
Kashina cried. Kashina, they need you in order to control the fox. Besides, you'll be able to teach them things I can't, things only a mother would know. But they need their father. She sobbed. And the village needs their Hakage right now. Please Kashina, remember our family is Shinobi, the will of the village comes first. Kashina was about to retort, but sadly she herself couldn't help but agree. Kanoha was her home and like any ninja she must put aside personal feelings for the safety of the village. She let out a little cry as she held the children to her husband. Minato could only look down upon the beautiful children that they made. Menma, the eldest, had their father's spiky hair but Kashina's eyes. Naruto was a perfect clone of Kashina with red hair but with blue eyes. The Yandame smiled sadly and hugged them close. Forgive me, my children, that I must make you become, but I promise you that your mom will always protect you. I will make sure that you have the happiest childhood you could ever want with her. Minato cried as he flashed back to the battlefield. Battlefield. Village gates. Hiruzen was going through the hand signs for the earth release. Mud Swamp Jutsu as the Kaiubi suddenly became stuck in the muddy depths restricting all of his movements. It looked to be trapped, but even he shouldn't underestimate the Nine Tails. It would soon be a matter of time before it got free again, the sounds of cracks in the earth only added to his fear. He soon gasped as the Nine Tails rose his head to the sky and opened his mouth as it was gathering energy for a Bijadama. Damn it if that thing finishes its attack the village is done for Hiruzen said grimly. Suddenly a large poof of smoke appeared above the fox as Gambunta the toad boss landed on the fox, preventing it from launching its attack. I don't think so, Gambunta said. Damn you. Kaiubi roared. Now was the moment for Minato to begin the sealing, as he was about to begin the hand signs when he was stopped by the third. Minato I said I would do the sealing, remember I am an old man and it's time for you to lead the young generation. Now hand me the children and I will seal the nine tails into them. But Minato stopped him as he refused to let his predecessor sacrifice himself if he couldn't do it himself. Minato sighed as he performed the hand signs at a fast rate. Finishing the last hand sign he shouted. Fuinjutsu. Shaiki Fujin. Suddenly the air got cold as the Shinigami appeared in all of her ethereal glory. Her appearance was ghost-like, her face hidden by a demon mask. She was dressed in whitish gray robes with a necklace in her left hand and a katana in her right hand. In front of her bound in ghostly whips was Minato's soul. Who dares summon me? The goddess demanded. Forgive me Shinigami-sama Minato stated as he spoke to the goddess. I wish to offer my soul as payment to seal the Kaiubi's chakra into Menma and the soul of the Kaiubi into my youngest son Naruto. The Shinigami smirked very well mortal I will seal the beast within your children, the goddess thrusted her hand into Minato's back as it reached through the man's frail body and towards the nine tails. Hirama gasped in fear as the ghostly hand made contact. No. No. I will not be sealed again new. No. The fox screamed as he was separated and pulled into Menma and Naruto. The eight trigram seal appeared on the baby's bellies as the sealing was complete. However the Shinigami noticed something strange about Naruto as she saw future events and it brought a smile, a dark evil smile upon her face. You are the one Naruto, I can tell you are a special boy and you can be the one that will save and change her for the better she smiled gazing down upon the sleeping red haired baby as she raised her arm up to the moon as an orb flew into her open palm. She then placed the orb within Naruto as Naruto's chakra color went from blue to white. Good luck little one, I have sealed Kagaya's power within you. I know you'll use it wisely and change the world. The goddess then turned towards Yandame as she grinned a bit which frightened him. I won't be taking your soul mortal, what? Minato said shockingly. He couldn't believe that he was being spared. But he felt there was some kind of catch. I'll get your soul one day, and I am a very patient woman she laughed darkly making Minato shiver. But don't make me regret sparing your life. This is a one-time deal, but don't take my decision as an act of mercy. She snarled as she vanished. Minato sighed a sigh of relief as he picked up his children and flashed back to his wife. The village was saved thanks to the noble sacrifice of Minato. The following day of the attack Minato announced to the village the noble sacrifice he performed to save the village. My people of Kanahagakur. Minato announced. Today our village suffered a major blow from the attack of the Kaiubi no Kitsun. We lost many loved ones who gave their lives to help us defeat it. Today we honor their sacrifice, especially my sister-in-law Kara Yuzumaki. It was thanks to her bloodline and her Fuinjutsu skills that we were able to contain it. So this is gone for good? A villager asked. Yes, I was able to summon the Shinigami herself to help me defeat the Kaiubi. But since the fox is pure chakra, I had no other option but to seal it away into my son. He and his wife then held up their two sons in the village. My eldest son Menmanamakas holds the chakra of the fox and will use it to protect the village. He praised, but somehow he forgot to mention Naruto. The village cheered for their Yandame and their saviors, well savior, as they view Menma as the hero who stripped the demon fox of its power. Minato and Kishina had trust in the village to treat their children with respect for their sacrifice. 
However nobody took notice of Naruto who was consumed by strange white chakra. Minato knew that his children were going to be happy and he was going to ensure that happened. The burial was held to honor those who lost their lives in their fight with the Kaiubi. Among them was Kari Uzumaki, the older sister of Kashina. She was one of the village's greatest seal masters, her skills in the art gave rise to future seal masters. Kashina was heartbroken when she heard her sister died to save the village. She vowed to raise her children to be like their aunt and teach them what it means to be a real Uzumaki. However that wasn't to be as Jiraiya had arrived at his office that afternoon telling him about a prophecy that talked about his children. The child will be born from the mighty tree, he will have powers of ancients long forgotten, but power of the divine beast he will save the world or become its destruction, if shrouded in darkness the child of prophecy will bring death to all in its path, if shrouded in love and light the child will bring the cycle of hatred to an end. He will bear the light of the moon and will use its power to bring peace. Upon hearing that Jiraiya told his student that he believed that it was Menma since he held the Nine Tails Chakra, along with the fact that the fox was a divine beast whose powers were of ancient ascent. It was then decided that they will leave the village to train their eldest to control the fox's power, but it also meant that they had to leave their son Naruto behind. They called Lord Hiruzen to his office to discuss their plan. Hiruzen answered their call with Orochimaru at his side. Yes Minato? Hiruzen asked. You summoned me for something. Yes Hiruzen I have summoned you here to retake the mantle of Hakage for a while, why? The aged Hakage wondered. Why not have Orochimaru fill in for you? Orochimaru would be a good choice, but you have the experience. What aren't you telling us Minato? Orochimaru asked. Letting out a sigh Minato revealed his plan to train Menma to harness the Kaiubi's chakra at their capital in the fire capital. When Orochimaru asked if they would also train Naruto since the soul of the Kaiubi was more tempting and manipulative than the chakra. Minato told them with a heavy heart that Naruto was going to be left behind. Minato you can't be serious about this. Exclaimed Hiruzen with wide eyes. I'm very serious Hiruzen Minato responded seriously. But he's your son. You can't just dump him like he's a disposable toy, retorted Lord Third. We aren't doing anything of the sort, replied Kishina harshly. She thought that the third Hakage would understand their reasons for doing this. Doesn't seem like it Orochimaru scoffed while holding Naruto in his arms. Menma needs training in order to gain control of Kaiubi's chakra. We are going to take him to our estate in the fire capital we've already talked to the fire daimyo and he's already agreed. What about Naruto? Are you just going to leave him here on his own? Ask Hiruzen referring to the young Redit in his prized student's arms. We can't bring Naruto with us, it's too dangerous for him to come with us, Minato said, taking a step back from the former Hakage's glare. And how pray tell is his parents leaving him on his own not dangerous? Orochimaru growled. We have to put all of our attention on Menma because of the demon chakra. Since Naruto has the soul of the Kaiubi, he won't need any special training Kishina stated. Plus with Kumo and I was still angry at them since the previous war, they'll be gunning for Minato and Kishina whenever they can. Said Jiraiya. But Naruto in the village he will be protected and safe from any assassins they sent. Plus no one will know of his heritage. Like hell he will the snake thought to himself. I know this village won't accept little Naruto-chan since they fear what they don't understand. Hiruzen unleashed so much Kai that it was suffocating Minato, Kishina and Jiraiya. It disturbed Menma, but it didn't really affect Naruto for some strange reason. Where will he stay while you're gone? He demanded. Well we can't have him living with any of the clans as that would draw suspicion towards him and we'd prefer it if nobody but you, Kakashi, Tsunade and Orochimaru know about this. Minato stated. So it would be best that he stays in an orphanage, Kishina said as she was sweating from Hiruzen's Kai that was drilling holes through their faces. Oh hell no. Orochimaru hissed as he let out killer intent, but it was masked over by the killer intent of the third wind as he felt the men's anger as he whimpered and started to cry. Orochimaru gasped as he realized that they were scaring little Naruto. Oh Naruto Uncle Snake is so sorry. We were just a little mad at your parents, we're sorry. An orphanage? You want your little boy to grow up in an orphanage? Hiruzen growled not liking this one bit. It's perfectly safe, it won't draw any suspicion, and when you tell everyone that Naruto has the soul of the Kaiubi, he will be declared a hero among the populace. We'll train Menma, and until he turns 13 we will come back to be with Naruto. Minato said. Yureya nodded in agreement with his student, I'll drop in here and now to check up on Naruto. The Toad Sage couldn't stay in the village for long as he had to help Minato and Kishina train their eldest Menma, who he believed was the child of prophecy. Tsunade was going with them as she was the children's personal doctor to ensure that they won't get injured anytime soon, she was after all their grandmother. That's right, Tsunade had a one-night stand with a man named Hans Namikaze and ended up pregnant with Minato. She cared for her son like any mother would and she was going to be there to take care of her grandchildren. Well one of them. You've truly become a fool Minato to think that this plan of yours will work. I should have made a better decision and declared Orochimaru IV instead of you, Hiruzen said in distaste. 
Bonato winced at those words as did the others, as they never thought that they would hear those kinds of words coming from Siratobi's mouth. Regardless of what you may think of us Hiruzen, we won't change our minds. We will take Menma to our estate in the fire capital and train him to control the Kaiubi's chakra and nothing you say will change our minds. Kishina said in a firm and stubborn tone. Hiruzen and Arachimaru stood up as they glared their darkest glare at the group which scared them a little, but the group stood their ground. The third Hakage glare was directed towards Kishina as the red head felt that immense killer intent increased. But it wasn't as intense as the snake's killer intent. I can't believe that you Kishina would abandon one child for the other. This clearly shows me that you are playing favorites with your children. Arachimaru sneered. Kishina growled, I am not playing favorites, you bag of scales. She ranted. Yes you are Kishina, you're leaving Naruto behind because he isn't a powered child. However this does prove one other thing he growled. Really? And what does it prove about Arachimaru? Kishina replied. Your blood traitor. He shouted, shocking them, especially Kishina. A true Uzumaki does not abandon family for any reason especially for some prophecy told by an old toad. A true Uzumaki stands by their family, their whole family. And because you are choosing to favor Menma over Naruto this shows and proves you are nothing more than a blood traitor. He roared as he stopped to catch his breath. You're treading on thin ice snake, Kishina is doing this for both of her sons. Her duty is to the world. Swan shouted. Her duty is to be a mother. Arachimaru retorted glaring at Kishina. Your duty is to take care of both of your children. As I recall you swore to your sister that you would raise both of your children to become like her. To represent what a tree Uzumaki is. Kishina stood there for a minute and was about to retort when Hiruzen interrupted her again. Get out all of you, at this moment you have all lost my respect, especially you Kishina. I thought that after what Mito taught you about family you would take those to heart, but clearly you care more about the prophecy than your own son. Hiruzen stated. You clearly don't understand the severity of the situation. Minato said sternly. Exactly, you're getting upset over nothing, said Jiraiya. Hiruzen tried to hold his rage in before calling his Anbu. Weasel, you called Lord Third, Weasel said, bound to him. Itachi please escort this bunch from my office. I can't stand the sight of them. Also take them to the edge of the village gate as they are leaving for the fire capital Hiruzen sneered. Hi. Itachi shouted as he escorted Minato and his group out of the office. Hiruzen sighed as he watched from the window as the Namikazes and the remaining Sanin left. Unknown to them a certain deity watched the whole thing, and boy oh boy was she not happy. Kami's realm. Shinigami's domain. Shinigami roared as she shoved her stack of paperwork off her desk and then threw the desk into the wall, breaking it in half. She was really pissed and I mean pissed and that rarely ever happens. The reason being for her anger was a certain blonde-haired human that she spared. That bastard. She screamed, punching a hole in the wall. I being the generous goddess spared that blonde-haired monkey's life after sealing the nine tails into his children and he goes and abandons his youngest like he doesn't matter because he doesn't hold the fox's chakra ooh by the gods I'll kill him. She sat down in her chair and rubbed her head. Mortals were always so defiant when the gods granted them certain privileges like power or knowledge or sometimes rarely eternal life. She never really believed in the humankind that her sister Kami made. To her they were flesh bags or her little playthings until a certain baby blonde seemed to worm his way into her cold and stone heart. The boy was special, but she couldn't understand why, but she didn't dwell on it. Right now she had to think of a way to get revenge on Minato Namikas. Having a migraine again sister. Yami asked as she and Kami entered her office, well her destroyed office, placed a cup of jasmine tea on her desk. It's that blonde bastard of Kanoha she then took hold of her cup of tea and took a few sips. The warm taste of jasmine tea seemed to calm her a little. As you know Kami I sealed the nine tails into Minato's children, of course I remember, you spared his life so he could raise his family, Kami chuckled as she poured herself some tea and took a seat next to her death goddess sister. Most of his family, Shinigami growled. Yami turned her head towards her with wide eyes as she took her seat, what do you mean by most of his family? What aren't you telling me? That bastard and his slut abandoned their youngest son in favor of his siblings because he doesn't have the Kaiubi's chakra. She panted as she looked at her shocked sister. Kami put her cup down as she was shocked out of her mind, her little sister was concerned about a human and not just any human child. She thought this must be some of her tricks, or as she did the hand signs to break the only thing that happened. Well well my little sister actually cares about a human. I never thought I'd see the day, Kami thought to herself as she laughed. The Shinigami noticed her sister's laughter and growled wondering why she was laughing at her. She then went wittied and her sister must have found out that she was concerned about a certain human. She groaned knowing that she will never hear the end of this. Oh go ahead laugh it up, but rest assured I'm going to make sure that Minato and Kishina regret this for the rest of their lives, Shinigami said in a cold tone. Yami smirked, really, and how are you going to do that? 
Last time I checked we can't interfere with mortal affairs it's the Laura member. Screw the rules the death goddess shouted, shocking her sisters. I owe it to that poor boy and I'm going to make sure that he has people that will raise him and will one day make Naruto so powerful Minato will be begging at his feet she laughed evilly as she rubbed her hands together. Ami's face palmed at her sister, her sister wasn't always one for following rules. She was a rebel hell she wouldn't even listen to most of the time. It's only when she threatened her would she fall into place, but now it seems that won't even work. However Yami couldn't help but want to see how this would play out, she wondered what she would do for this human child named Naruto Uzumaki. Okay sisei I let you do this how are you going to make this up to the boy? Yami asked. The Shinigami gave Yami a smirk as her sisters knew right then and there what she had in mind. Kami couldn't believe that was even going to consider that, it was absolutely insane. Shinichan please you can't possibly consider what I think you're considering are you? Kami said the death goddess didn't reply, instead she disappeared in a swirl of crying and screaming tormented souls as she left Kami's realm and descended down to the mortal world. On Hagakur Hakage Tower, they left. They actually left and abandoned Naruto here, Hirachimaru growled as his rage increased tenfold. Here is inside as he sat down in the Hakage seat, yes they left and they wanted him to live in an orphanage. Like hell he will. A voice shouted. Naruto isn't going to live in any orphanage. Startled, the men took their defensive positions to protect themselves and Naruto. They noticed a dark portal appear at the office door as a woman came out of it. Her appearance was dark but beautiful. Hiruzen demanded who she was. A dark chuckle made them quiver with fear as she looked up at them. I am here in good faith, Hiruzen, she chuckled. Who are you? Orochimaru hissed, getting his snakes ready to strike her. I am the one who helped Minato seal away the Kaiubi. Shinigami they both gasped. Bingo and the reason I'm here is for the little one. Shinigami with all due respect, you can't take Naruto. He's only a baby Hiruzen replied with a bit of desperation in his tone. Ha 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 ha, she laughed. I haven't laughed this much in centuries ha 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 ha. I'm not here to take Naruto. I'm here to make up for what his parents did. Please tell me you'll devour their souls the snake begged. Ah ha ha maybe but no the goddess chuckled. What I am going to do is give Naruto a new set of parents. Ones that will show him good morals and raise him to be a proper shinobi. After all he is the prophecy child. What? The men shouted. Naruto is the chosen one? Yes he is. Now on to business, I am going to return two people from the dead and restore them to their youth. They will become Naruto's new parents and not only will they change the way of the village and bring back the true will of fire. Who are these people you're going to resurrect? Hiruzen asked. Ashirama Senju and Mito Yuzumaki. She answered. Hiruzen froze in shock, the Shinigami was going to bring back the first Hakage of the Hidden Leaf and the greatest seal mistress in Konoha back to life. Many thoughts were blowing through his mind like a wild storm. He was debating on whether or not this was the answer. One part of him told him to leave his sensei and his wife to rest in peace as they did their job. But the other part of him believed that having Hashirama back would set the village back on the right path, plus Hiruzen could finally retire. After all, Hashirama died young, so he was sure he could handle being Hakage again. Plus this would be a good upbringing for Naruto. I believe it's a good idea, said Orochimaru, shocking his sensei. What are you saying Orochimaru? Hiruzen asked. What I mean is that Hashirama and Mito would be the perfect role models for him. Especially since this will be a shocker when Swand and the others come back the smirked. Well? The Shinigami asked impatiently. What do you say? Hiruzen sighed, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I agree with Orochimaru. Having them back would greatly benefit not only the village, but Naruto as well. But may I ask Shinigami-sama why are you doing this? I owe it to the boy, she answered. Wow, who knew you had a heart? Hirachimaru chuckled. Don't push the snake. She snarled. Well I still agree it's a good idea, Hiruzen smiled. The wise choice now let's get started she laughed as she clapped her hands together. Time to work some necromancy. She conjured up shadows as she gripped her scepter and a large pentagram appeared on the floor. The floor broke apart as many souls were wailing from the underworld. The skies opened up and Hiruzen could see a blinding white light. I call to you from the land you were torn, return to the world from where you were born. Arise Hashirama Senju and Mito Yuzumaki. The office shook as the Hakage held onto something and tried to shield Naruto from the ritual and its horrors. The graves of Hashirama and Mito exploded as the ritual took full effect and conjured up their souls. When the light died down there they stood. Hashirama and Mito Senju Yuzumaki in their youth. How what's going on? Hashirama asked frantically. How are we back, Mito? He said looking at his wife. You're young again. Mito looked herself over and looked into a nearby mirror and noticed her youthful appearance. She then looked back at her husband so have you. But I don't understand why we are back in the land of the living and it is our youth. It's because of the Shinigami, Hiruzen said as they looked at him. Hiruzen, you're still the Hakage. Hashirama chuckled. Unfortunately he sighed, smoking his pipe. 
Anyway, to answer your question, like my student said, the Shinigami herself brought you back. But why? Nito asked. Because of this special baby here he said as Orochimaru introduced them to Naruto. This is Naruto Uzumaki Namaka's Senju, son of Minato Senju Namaka's the Yande Mahakage and Kishina Uzumaki. Kishina? Well so they finally tied the knot Nito chuckled. Where are they? Well that's the reason you were resurrected. You might want to sit down for this. Hiruzen said, motioning them to take a seat. They took their seat as Hiruzen explained the entire situation to them from the Kaiubi attack to Minato and Kishina, abandoning their youngest son, so they could train their eldest child to control the Kaiubi's chakra. Upon finishing the story, Hiruzen got the response he was looking for. Ashurama was angry no scratch, pissed off at the disgraceful act committed by his great-grandson and granddaughter. But his anger wasn't even close to the rage Mito Senju was now radiating. Mito felt betrayed that Kishina would betray her teachings on family and what it meant to be in Yuzumaki. To abandon one's own child was a sin to the Yuzumaki clan, and those who committed this were greatly punished for it. Where are they now? Mito seethed. They are at the capital and won't be back till Naruto turns 13 years old. The snake replied. I see, she said coldly. May I hold him? She asked softly. Arachimara nodded and placed Naruto in her arms. Mito and Hashirama could see many of the Senju and Yuzumaki blood traits in him. From the Yuzumaki red hair to the Senju chakra reserve and body structure. He was most certainly a powerful child, but what caught them off guard was the white chakra he had. Being a sensor Mito could see that he was going to be a powerful shinobi in the future. The Shinigami wants you to raise him as your own. Hiruzen said. Will you do it? Well it's been a long time since we raised kids. I wouldn't mind raising one more Mito smiled. I agree, Hashirama added. Perfect Shinigami smiled, making everyone look at her. I've already switched Minato and Kashina's DNA with yours and Mito's. Congrats he's now biologically yours. Now if you'll excuse me I got some souls to torture and lots of paperwork to do. She then vanished through the floor. Well, let me be the first to welcome you back sensei, Hiruzen smiled. And to take back the Hakage seat so I can retire. Ashirama chuckled as he agreed to take the seat back after he got settled in with his wife and new son. Hiruzen got the paperwork and filled it out. Mito and Hashirama renamed their son as Naruto Madara Uzumaki Senju, in honor of their old friend Madara Che. After signing the documents Hiruzen gave Hashirama the keys to the Senju compound. The Senju couple vanished from the office and took Naruto to his new home. The life of Naruto Senju begins. Hashirama and Mito arrived at the old Senju compound. It was just like they remembered it, a large complex with a main house, large gardens, training grounds, and beautiful forests. It brought back so many memories from the day Kanahagakur was formed to the day that died. Looks like we're going to make new memories, Mito chuckled. Ashirama chuckled, kissing his wife's forehead. Let's get settled in. Heading into the compound, they reached the main house which was a four-story tall mansion with many rooms. It had a side building attached to the Senju clan dojo, where future Senjus were trained before they attended the academy. Going inside the main hall was as grand as the architecture. The Senju compound was an ancient cultural building since the Great Wars. Though it's gone through many renovations over the years it was still a sight to behold. They entered the living room which was small with couches and other pieces of furniture. They could take in the fresh new scents as Hashirama sat down in his favorite armchair that was still there after all these years. Mito darling, why don't you take Naruto up to his new bedroom, I'm sure the nursery is still there? Hashirama asked, leaning back into his chair. Uo Hashi, you always were a little lazy at home, but you were a fantastic husband, Mito chuckled, taking Naruto upstairs. Mito headed upstairs as she came to the nursery where her grandchildren Tsunade and Nawaki used to play and sleep when they were babies. She quickly lost her smile when she thought of Tsunade, who abandoned her youngest grandchild for her eldest one. She headed inside as the walls were painted to look like the forest, there were many child toys that she might have to replace with new and safer ones. She came to the crib that looked brand new, she guessed it must have been Minato's old crib. She looked down at her new child and smiled as the baby was sound asleep in her arms. Uo Naruto you're going to love it here. Your father and I will make sure you grow up loved and strong, after all we stick together and we always put family first. Naruto yawned as Mito placed him in his crib and placed a blanket over him. She gave him a kiss on his forehead and smiled down at him. She then hummed a little tune as she began to sing him a lullaby. She smiled as Naruto snored quietly as he looked so serene when he's fast asleep. Mito leaned down gently to kiss his forehead again. I love you my son she whispered before leaving the nursery to join her husband in the living room. How is Naruto? Hashirama asked Mito. Naruto is sleeping soundly my dear. Mito smiled. Wonderful, now that we've gotten settled in, it's time for me to greet Hiruzen to discuss the future of the village. According to the details supplied to him by his old student after they were resurrected, the civilian council had gotten out of hand. They meddled in the affairs of the shinobi which they had no say in. 
he should have listened to his brother and not given the civilian council so much leeway. Well that all stops now. Will you accompany me dear? Of course Hashirama just let me do one thing, Mito said, creating a blood clone. You stay here and guard Naruto she ordered her clone. Of course, the clone replied. Hashirama took her hand as he took them to the Hakage's office. On the village market district, since the attack of the Kaiubi yesterday many of the shinobi and civilians that suffered the traumatic experience of the attack were slowly trying to move forward. They suffered many casualties and losses including loved ones. Reconstruction of the village was underway as the reparations of the northern and eastern district sector of the village that suffered the most damage was almost complete. Everyone moved on and licked the wounds except for a few. Among those few was Kakashi Haddock, Minato's only surviving student. Kakashi Haddock, the copycat ninja who copied over a thousand, a man who many called a hardcore strong-hearted ninja, was now drinking his anger and sake at the local bar. The man couldn't let go of the hate he felt when he discovered that his own sensei Minato Namikaze was abandoning his youngest son for his child. Not only that but Kishina who always spoke proudly on how family is important and always sticks together, would suddenly abandon her child for a prophecy, I mean she's in Yuzumaki for crying out loud. It made him sick to his stomach and didn't even get him started on the salmon. But he was happy that Arachimaru didn't go with him, at least the snake had brains and a heart. Atakasan, the bartender asked. Don't you think you had enough? I'll tell you when I have enough, Kakashi ranted. Another one. The bartender immediately refilled his glass as Kakashi gouged it down in a single gulp. Kakashi's friends watched him in disappointment but sorrow. They knew that Kakashi took Minato's leaving and abandonment of his son hard. After all, Kakashi looked up to and admired his sensei, but now he wouldn't even speak of him. Hakage Tower. Hakage's office. In the Hakage's tower Hiruzen was stuck doing what old Cage feared the most. Paperwork. That's right paperwork, a Cage's worst nightmare. After the attack he's gone through pile after pile after pile. Curse you Minato you leave the village, but you don't give me the secret to defeat paperwork he groaned as he scanned through the papers. Many of the papers were from the civilian council that demanded lots of money to repair their homes and businesses that were destroyed in the attack. Here is inside as he leaned back into his chair and smoked his pipe, the civilian council had been a pain in ass ever since he took the mantle of Hakage. He still couldn't believe his sensei Hashirama gave them a say in shinobi affairs, which was a mistake as the civilians grew arrogant and began to abuse their authority. But he hoped when Hashirama retakes the mantle he will be able to set things straight. I'm getting too old for this the professor said, smoking his pipe as he went over the reports of the damage. Bear he yelled, a bear mask Anbu knelt before him. I Sande Misama the Anbu stated. Give me the full situation report, the number of casualties of both civilians and shinobi. Here is an ordered. The Kagasama shinobi casualties have been estimated at 1000 shinobi, along with 150 Anbu dead, and the number is still rising. We haven't cleared all of the debris of the northern and eastern sector, so we aren't really sure. However the civilian casualties have reached 1,500 dead and many in critical condition. Bear finished. Very well thank you for the report Bear you are dismissed, leave the report here on my desk and return to your duties. Here is in commanded. With your leave Hakagasama said Bear as he flickered away. Arg. Just when I'm finally ready to retire Kami herself decides to fuck it up and now I have to deal with more paperwork he groaned as rubbed his temples. Why does Kami hate me? After 10 minutes Hiruzen had finally finished up the remaining paperwork that was the death of him for years. He was glad to finally be rid of it, the only thing left to do now was to make his sensei the new Hakage and finally retire to live out the remainder of his years as he wants. He got up from his seat and cleaned off his desk and started to smoke his pipe when Hashirama appeared. Still smoking Hiruzen, those things can kill you, you know, Hashirama chuckled. When you're as old as I am sensei, you realize that sometimes a smoke can make any stressful day a relief. He sighed, taking a puff. So I take it you're ready to retire for the day? Hashirama asked him. Yes sensei, he groaned. Now I can finally retire. Lord Third took off his hat and robes and presented them to Hashirama. Lord First took them with great pride like he did over 100 years ago. Placing the robes on he straightened and tightened the knots. He then placed the hat atop his head as Hiruzen welcomed him back as the Hakage. Mito also congratulated her husband. A knock at the door as an Anbu spoke from outside the office. Lord Third the council has requested your presence, the Anbu deer said. Tell them I'll be right there, Hiruzen replied, waiting till Anbu left. Well sensei, it's time to reveal your existence to the council. Indeed, it's also time for the village to go through drastic changes. Hashirama started coldly. Lord Third and Lady Mito nodded as they left the office and followed Hashirama to the council chambers to discuss the future of the leaf and to knock some people down a peg. Council chambers, Hiruzen and company stood before the door that led to the council meeting. Lord Third had been notified that everyone else had already arrived. 
but as he stood before it he couldn't help but feel a slight unsettled, as if something big was going to conspire boy oh boy was he in for a surprise. He could already hear soft chatter and discussions going on. Praying to the gods that were listening he pushed open the door and swept into the room. Lord Third took his seat at the head of the table and then surveyed the council. The council was split into three parts, the Shinobi Council which consisted of the clan heads of the Hayuga, Aburam, Inuzuka, Akamichi, Nara, Kurama, Ichiha, Saratobi, and the Nara clan, minus the Senju, Yuzumaki, and Namika's seats that were still empty. But not for long. The civilian council that handles civilian and financial affairs like stocks and trades, and finally the elder council which consisted of the Hakage's advisors Hamura, Kaharu, and the old war hawk Danzo. Order, I call this meeting to order, shouted Hirzen. The Kagasama, where is Minato? Hiashi asked. Shouldn't he be here? Following his battle with the Kaiubi, Minato managed to defeat the beast with a SS rank Fuinjutsu called the Shaiki Fujin. With it, he was able to summon the goddess of death herself and had sealed the nine tails away into his children Menma and Naruto. The Hakage explained. Menma holds the fox's chakra, while Naruto contains the soul. The civilian council immediately called for the death of the youngest Namakas, for they believed he was the nine tails in human form. Hashirama and Mito, who were outside of the chambers, were furious but kept their cool. They didn't want to give themselves away just yet. Silence, Hiruzen shouted. Akage-sama, we must kill the demon. A civilian shouted. We must kill it while it's still weak in human form. I'll show you a demon, Hashirama whispered, getting his kunai ready until Mito stopped him. Mito gave Hashirama a look that said don't act rashly, wait for the right moment Hashirama groaned before putting away his kunai. Naruto is what keeps the demon from escaping and killing us all. Hiruzen shouted to the fat merchant civilian. Amura cleared his throat may I suggest that handing them over to the council, we can train them to control the power of the tailed beast. I will train them to be strong and loyal ninjas of the leaf. Hiruzen groaned the answer is no, besides Minato and Kishina left for the fire capital. Unfortunately they decided to only take Menma and left Naruto behind. What? The clan head screamed. But maybe they will train their son to kill the demon with the very power that they stripped from him. Another civilian shouted. Enough Mibuki Hirano screeched. This boy Naruto is as much a victim as we are. Everyone was shocked that Mibuki Hirano, the head of the civilian council, would defend the boy. Hiruzen was most shocked since her husband Seiko Hirano was a demon hater and was killed in the Kaiubi attack. Mibuki Hirano, how could you defend the demon who killed your husband? A wealthy civilian asked. I'm not defending the demon, I'm defending the boy who imprisoned it. She harshly replied. Why would Minato, especially Kishina, leave their youngest pup and take their other pup with them? It doesn't make sense, Tsum said coldly. I never thought my teammate could do such a thing, Hiashi shouted. Such a drag, but I have to agree with him, Hakagasama. It sounds to me that Minato preferred the kid with the fox's chakra, am I right? Shikaku asked. Leave it to Anaira to figure things out quickly here as in sweat dropped, you hit the nail on the head Shikaku, Kishina stated that Menma needed to control the Kaiubi's chakra and that Naruto just wasn't that important. The shinobi council was in an uproar at the complete disregard that their once beloved yandame and red hot habanero had towards their youngest son. Questions were soon asked about what would happen to the boy. Many of the clans offered to take him in. The first one to volunteer was Yugaku who secretly wanted a weapon to increase the power of the clan. Next was Hiashi who was ashamed of his former best friend and thought of taking the boy in not for Minato or Kishina but to give the boy a caring loving home. Tsum wanted to take care of the child as she can relate to him, since she herself comes from a clan that was once feared and demonized due to their wolf-like features and powerful techniques. Tsum also was ashamed her blood sister Kishina would abandon one pup for the more powerful one. She thought the redhead was in Yuzumaki, a clan that was known to put family above all else, but clearly she was wrong. The Shikachoino trio couldn't take care of the child since they have their hands full with kids of their own plus, with the fact that Nara men would complain as always, and clearly they didn't want Naruto to be lazy. The Yamanaka were out of the question, since Yamanaka males were always busy with barely enough time to spend with their kids, leaving it to their wives, and Naruto needs to have a father that dedicates their lives to both their jobs and their kids equally. Finally the Akimichis tend to overfeed their kids, and I don't think they would want to fat Naruto. The Aburam was clearly out of the question since who would want bugs living in their bodies. There is inside as he silenced them with a small amount of Kai, now that I have your attention I understand that you all wish to take care of the boy, unfortunately that won't be happening, you see the Shinigami who sealed the Kai Ubi away left us a little present. The Haru spoke up first, Hiruzen what are you talking about, I let our guests explain, Hiruzen smiled as he motioned the couple inside. The council gasped as silence filled the room. Everyone could only stare and not even say a word. There standing before them was the first Hakage, Hashirama Senju and Mito Yuzumaki. The shinobi clan heads stood in awe and respect for one of the village's founders. 
However the advisors were not convinced and believed it to be a trick. Pirazin, what trickery is this? You dare defy Lar sensei memory by using the Edo Tensei to bring him back to the land of the living. Kaharu shouted. Silence your mouth, insolent pups. Hashirama shouted. This is not my brother's jutsu, the Shinigami has brought my wife and I back to the land of the living. Why would the goddess of death bring you back? Shikakunara asked. Unless there was a good reason. Mido was the one who spoke up to answer the Nara, yes Lord Nara, you see the Shinigami is angered for Minato breaking his promise to her. After Minato abandoned Naruto here without a second thought, it was decided that we would return to the mortal plane and raise Naruto as our own. What? Everyone shouted. Indeed the Shinigami replaced Naruto's blood and DNA with my own and my wife's. Naruto is biologically ours now and we shall thrive where Minato had failed. I will also retake the mantle of Hakage. After all, I think we all agree it's time for Hiruzen to step down so he can enjoy his golden years. That is true sensei, Hiruzen agreed until he let out a huge smile. This is a grand occasion, now Lord First can keep the demon in check and keep it weak. A civilian cheered. The demon will be bowing at our feet. The civilian's rejoicing was cut short when a spike of wood sprang from the floor and pierced through the man's neck killing him. The Kagasama. A civilian council member shouted. The next person who calls my son a demon, their lives are next Hashirama screamed angrily. Now since I'm Naruto's father and the eldest Senju male then by clan law I'm the clan head and my wife shall be the Uzumaki clan head since she's the eldest Uzumaki, considering Kashina broke her vow to the clan and hasn't been active in her duties as clan head. My husband is right and you all know it too, plus Minato never took the mantle of Senju clan head since he's the Namika's clan head, so therefore by the law, the clan head position is passed to the eldest Senju Mito stated. Well sensei since you're going to retake the mantle of Hakage, which is wonderful. Let me be the first to welcome you back. This will keep our enemies off our backs and we will be able to rebuild a bit faster. Said Danzo, getting a nod from Hashirama. If there is nothing else to discuss then I hereby dismiss this meeting. Here is instated. Wait. Kaharu said quickly. What shall we tell the village? Nothing. Danzo shouted, making everyone look at him. The village has started rebuilding itself and the people are trying to get over their grief. If you announce Naruto's status, he will become a target, an outlet for their rage and hatred for the fox. Anzo, Hiruzen said surprisingly. This is a side of you I've never seen. I may be a cold shinobi Hiruzen, but I'm not heartless. Danzo said sternly. Therefore I ask that we keep Naruto's status a SSS rank secret so that the boy can at least have a normal life. The civilian council minus Mibuki went into an uproar again. They refused to do anything that would protect the demon. Danzo silenced them with a threat of execution if even one of them revealed the boy's status to anyone. This silenced them completely as they sank down into their seats. The first Hakage could only smile at how mature Danzo has gotten since his Ganon days. One more thing before I dismiss this meeting, the civilian council is hereby disbanded. I will discuss it with Mibuki Hirono after everyone leaves. The civilians wanted to retort, but a single glare from Mido kept them quiet. They didn't take their defeat well though, they swore to do everything they could to make the demon pay. When no one had anything else to talk about Lord First dismissed the council. Mibuki stayed behind as ordered as she gave a list of civilians that she knew wouldn't blame Naruto for something he couldn't control. Ashirama thanked her as she bowed her head and left the chambers. Well I better get back to Naruto, it's time for his feeding, Mido smiled as she went to the Senju compound. Looks like we better go over the village rules and make some changes, it's time the village had a wake-up call Hashirama told Hiruzen. Hiruzen nodded, yes I agree sensei, this will undo everything the previous civilian council had done. Hashirama and Hiruzen spent the afternoon going over the old and new laws that were made after Hashirama's death. Hiruzen was right about one thing, the village hidden in the leaves was in for a huge wake-up call. It's been a few months since the Kaiubi incident and the village had already managed to rebuild itself in record time. The memories however of that horrible night were still embedded in their pics. Their former Hakage, Hiruzen put their fears to rest with words of encouragement that the leaf will never fall. Many believed it, but some have not. Hiruzen had also revealed to the village the gift Kami blessed them with, he revealed the return of the first Hakage Hashirama Senju. The village was in complete shock when the legendary god of Shinobi made his presence known to them atop the Hakage Tower. Hashirama with words of wisdom from his days as Hakage and his speech of the will of fire gave rise to strengthen the help of the people. The village cheered out his name as Hashirama retook the hat and robes from Hiruzen. After taking the robes Hashirama who nodded to his student turned to address the village and revealed that Minato left the village after the Nine Tails attack was over. Aura filled the audience as he told them how he just left the village to train his son Menma to control the Kaiubi's chakra while leaving the village to rebuild without its leader. Anger and harsh words spread as the villagers demanded the return of the Yandame for his desertion. Hashirama put them to rest and promised them that Minato would pay for his crimes. 
Kakashi approached the Shadame and asked if they could be allowed one piece of revenge no matter how small. Ir Kakashi Haddock, Minato's prized student, what do you have in mind? Hashirama asked. Kakashi Haddock walked past him and stood before the Hakage Mountain and pointed to Minato's stone face. Minato deserted us, he abandoned his child because of a prophecy, he left us when we were still rebuilding. He believed a prophecy was more important than taking care of our village Kakashi scoffed. Kakashi taught Kurenai and Mike Guy. I suggest we take the stone face down. Kakashi said, shocking everyone. If Minato believed we were not good enough because of a prophecy then he doesn't deserve to be. Ashirama looked at Hiruzen, Hiruzen. Bakashi has a point, you once said, those who desert their comrades are trash, but those who desert the village are unforgivable. Minato chose to leave after the village was rebuilding itself. He made his choice. You have a point, Hashirama said before looking at the village. Do as you see fit. The villagers cheered as chains were thrown and hooked into the stone face. The villagers grunted as they started to pull on the chains. The weight from the stone was strong, but their anger was stronger. Arg. They shouted as the stone in the mountain started to crack and slowly break. Dodori. Kakashi said he plunged his lightning blade through the Hakage stone head forehead. The strain from the chains and the Chidori was too much as the stone broke apart as the villagers pulled one final time. The stone face broke from the mountain as it came crashing down. The stone face hit the ground as it broke apart upon impact as the villagers cheered. Hashirama was shocked but proud of the villagers' dedication and loyalty to the village. The following afternoon the village was being rebuilt with the thousands upon thousands of fresh wood Hashirama gave them with his Mokuten. The money that the Senju and Uzumaki clan had were then shared among the people to help them get back to their lives. 20% of their clan's fortunes were given to rebuild the village itself, while another 10% were given to the civilians for their stores, businesses, and homes that were destroyed. The village's reconstruction was going perfectly with the supplies Lord Shadame had given them. Meanwhile back in his office Hashirama was going through the paperwork, a Hakage's nightmare. But Hashirama chuckled as he knew the secret to defeat paperwork, and that was shadow clones. His assistant Mibuki Hirono was helping with the minor things in the village, such as financial and other small problems. She was a great help to him. Akage-sama his secretary, a middle-aged woman, said entering his office. Brava, what can I do for you? Pardon the interruption Lord Hashirama, a letter arrived for you sir. She said, handing him the letter. When he took it he saw on the back the Namaka's clan symbol. It was from Minato and Kishina. Gripping the letter in his hands he tried to keep his anger in check before taking a deep breath. Thank you Rava that will be all. Hi, she said leaving the office. Ashirama growled softly, still glaring at the letter. Should he open it? Or should he just cast it away like Minato cast away Naruto? Mibuki noticed how stressed the Hakage was and wondered if it had something to do with the letter. Approaching him she asked if he was alright. Oh well, yes Mibuki said I'm fine. Are you sure Lord Hakage? You seemed really stressed. No, it's nothing I'm okay. Very well if you are sure she said before going back to her duties. Sighing in relief, Hashirama slowly began to open the envelope. He decided he should at least read what Minato had to say, no matter how bad the excuses he would make. Taking out the paper he unfolded the letter and began to read. Dear Hiruzen, Hashina and I have made it to the fire capital safely. We have settled in just fine in the royal district of the capital. It feels good to be back home where my ancestors lived. I'm looking forward to teaching Menma about his ancestors and all the techniques of the clan. Kishina has been going on about how Menma will take after her clan more than mine. But enough about that, how's Naruto doing? We haven't received any letter from you since we arrived. I can only guess you're still angry at us for leaving Naruto behind. But like I said here is in we need to train Menma to control the chakra and having the boys together would allow the soul to regain its stolen chakra. It's best they grow apart so they will both be safe. Trust me here is in this is for the best, you'll see. But putting that aside, how is my son, is he being spoiled by the villagers due to his new hero status? Oh Kashina wanted to write to you as well. Here is an, this is Kashina, still upset about my choice. See reason for once old man I'm doing this for both of my boys. I love them both, and having Naruto here will just endanger him if the soul is anywhere near its chakra. You can hate me all you want, old man, but I will not risk both my children's lives if Kaiubi regains its chakra. I hope you raise Naruto with good morals, because I won't have him becoming a spoiled brat when we come to reclaim him. I hope you didn't make Naruto believe we abandoned him for his brother, because if you did here is in you're going to be a very sorry old man. Also I don't want Orochimaru influencing my baby with his newfound hatred for me and my husband. The prophecy is very important, and Naruto will be trained when we come to him to support his brother. Menma will become the next head of the Senju and Uzumaki clans, and Naruto at best will be a branch member. Naruto will be trained in minor ninjutsu and mostly to jutsu as a support ninja and will help his brother fulfill the prophecy. You'll see Hiruzen, it will all work out for everyone. Dureya will be coming in a few days to check up on Naruto for us. 
Yours sincerely, Minato and Kishina Namikas. After finishing the letter a storm of emotions raged within the first Hakage. Hashirama was infuriated that the Yande meant his wife felt so little for their son. They believed him to be a weak support ninja to aid his elder brother in fulfilling a prophecy which he might add isn't even set in stone. After all prophecies constantly change and in Hashirama's opinion prophecies don't foretell a person's fate, to him a shinobi makes his or her own fate. He then tore up the letter in anger and tossed its scraps in the garbage. He then grabbed a piece of paper and a pen and began to write his own reply. He put every amount of emotion into his response and then had it sealed. Mabuki? He shouted. Yes sir, she replied. Take this letter and give it to the postal ninja division. I want this letter sent to the Yandame Hakage in the fire capital immediately. He said coldly. Mabuki feeling the coldness emitting from him nodded and rushed out of the office to have the letter delivered. After she left Hashirama vanished from his seat after finishing all of his paperwork, Uzumaki Senju compound. Hakage's monument. Mito Uzumaki was in the kitchen dressed in a long light green dress skirt and a blue shirt that tightened against her chest, showing some cleavage. She wore a pink apron that said insult my cooking, I'll kill you on it, as she hummed a little tune getting lunch ready for her family. She was cooking some delicious miso ramen with a side of bread and vegetables. She wanted her kids to be healthy and well nourished. Mito sent a voice rang out. Oh Itachi, Mito smiled, turning around to look at them. Itachi was helping her out with Naruto for the day, as the heir had taken care of her son, while she was doing the house chores and working at the hospital. Itachi walked towards her carrying Naruto in his arms. Naruto Uzumaki Senju, the pride of the clans, was a beautiful clone of his parents. His baby fat skin trimmed to a soft pale tan that resembled his mother's. His hair was blood red like his mother, and his eyes were a dark brown like his daddy. He was a mini male version of Mito. He was the shining light in not only her life, but also the villages. Is Hashirama coming home soon? Itachi asked. Yes, he will be home soon, Mito replied. I thank you again Itachi for helping me these past few days. Glad to help Mito-sama, I think I might become Naruto's favorite babysitter. Mito got the lunch ready when her husband entered the room with a smile on his face. He greeted his wife with a kiss on the cheek as he smelled the ramen that was cooking. He also noticed her famous dumplings that she always made. He tried sneaking his hand over to grab one only for a ladle to smack his hand. He yelped rubbing his hand as his wife gave him a stern but happy smile. Ah, ah, ah Hashirama we don't eat dumplings till after lunchtime. She said smiling. Hashirama grumbled, mmmm troublesome wife. So mean. Not even one? He asked. No Hashirama, no snacks before lunch, Mito yelled. Hashirama sulked in his seat as Mito sighed with a smile. You're hopeless, Mito chuckled. Uzumaki women are so mean, he grumbled. I heard that, Mito smirked. Hashirama sighed with a small laugh, well how's my favorite family? We are doing fine, said Mito. Itachi was a good help as well. Oh yes Itachi Ichiha, a prodigy similar to Madara. I heard you completed your mission in record time yesterday. Hashirama praised. Well when I reached the border, my team was greeted with hostility from Iowa. Apparently they heard about you coming back from someone from the leaf and attacked us. Luckily we killed about 200 out of 250 Iowa ninjas, thanks to my Sharingan and Kakashi's Yadori. Hashirama sighed and let out a groan at the info. Conflict no matter what the ear. After lunch Hashirama we are going to the festival. Mito reminded him. Now let's sit down and eat I don't want all of my hard work on this meal spoiled okay. Hi he said as everyone began to eat. Who Itachi care to join us? Who oh thank you Lord Hakage. After the delicious lunch, all the dishes were clean thanks to Itachi and his shadow clones. Soon Itachi left to greet his family, while Mito and Hashirama got dressed to get ready for the spirit festival to honor the shinobi who lost their lives for the village. Hashirama dressed himself in a black kimono with red satin. While Mito dressed in a royal kimono with white satin tied around the waist. She wore her gold headpiece as two ceiling tags hung from the buns in hair. Naruto was dressed in baby clothes well dressed like a little fox. Alright let's get going, the festival won't start without us present, Hashirama smiled. They left the compound and met with their fellow friends that awaited them at the complex gates. They bowed their heads to their clan heads as they greeted them. The entire family soon left to join in the festivities. On the Hagakur Central Sector, the festival was in full swing as the village square was decorated with lots of lights, lanterns, and lots of masks. Lots of food was prepared and the game stands were put up for the children. The people dressed in appropriate clothing for the celebration. Hashirama and his family arrived as the people greeted them with warm smiles and good greetings. Welcome Hikagasama, a civilian said. My lord and lady an elderly woman started bowing her head. He smiled, hello my friends I trust things are well he asked, getting a nod from the festival committee which was made up of 130 civilians and 300 shinobi and retired shinobi. The young woman walked up to the family presenting him with a plate of fresh dango which he accepted. 
It was so delicious as he gave her a thumbs up on it making her happy. Lord Hashirama voice rang out. The family smiled as they noticed it was Makoto Uchiha and her family. Fugaku greeted them with a firm nod which they returned. The Uchiha clan head and Hashirama were not friends but remained civil to each other. Fugaku was still all about having Naruto as a weapon, but after fighting Mito Uzumaki who gave him such a tongue lashing. She gave him such a beating Fugaku turned over a new leaf, although he was still the cold clan head we all know and love. Makoto greeted the family as she gave them each a hug, including the little red head who always brought a smile to her family. She was the friend of the family, but to Naruto Makoto was more like an aunt or second mother figure. Ever since she found out about Kashina abandoning Naruto like he was nothing she lost all respect for the redhead. In fact the day after she found out what Kashina did she burned and ripped up every picture that she had of them together. She even threw away all the gifts that Kashina bought her over the years they were friends. She never wanted anything to do with her and soon found a new friend in Mito. Good to see you, Mito said as she presented the rose to her. Makoto smiled as she knelt down and took the rose, oh thank you I love it, she sniffed the rose before she put it in her hair. You look lovely Kasan, that rose brings out your beauty, Itachi laughed. Naruto picked out the rose for you, Mito chuckled. Makoto laughed as she rubbed his head, ooh oh thank you Naruto. Ashirama smiled, how are you doing Lady Makoto, Lord Fugaku? I thought it has don't like happy, bright festivals or parties he joked, getting a bonk on the head from his wife. Forgive my husband, he tends to make jokes at the worst times, Mito laughed. The Ichiha and the Uzumaki Senju families met up with their fellow clans, while their children set out to meet with their friends and play lots of games. Soon Hiruzen and his wife had met up with Hashirama. He greeted the couple with a bow of respect which the couple had returned. Welcome Lord Hiruzen and Lady Bawako, it is good to see you, he said. The honor is our Lord Hashirama, Bawako said respectfully. I trust you, you are looking forward to the festival with your family, Hiruzen laughed while enjoying a glass of sake. Mido nodded, yes indeed thank you. Enough chatter we have a festival to enjoy Hashirama said as everyone headed to join their friends in the festivities. Higher capital. Namika's compound. Kashina had placed Menma to bed as she had headed downstairs to have some tea with Minato and the others. After the stressful afternoon she had taken care of her bundle of joy. Menma was exactly like her when she was a baby. She was greeted by Tsunade who made her favorite tea, Uo, the sweet scent of jasmine tea. She took notice of Minato and Jureya who were covered in scratches and slight bruises, meaning they were out training. Oh well boys will be boys. Here you are Kashina, Tsunade smiled, setting the tea in front of her. Thank you Tsunade sensei. Kashina smiled, taking a seat and taking a sip from her tea. Sounds like you had quite the afternoon with Menma. Tsunade laughed. Yeah he was a handful, but I can handle it. He's more like me every day. Yeah I remember all the sleepless nights I had Minato jokes. That's why I'm the mother darling, I'm the more mature parent. Kashina smirked. Hey speaking of babies, have you heard of Saratobi sensei? Jureya asked. No sensei, Minato sighed, shaking his head. I believe he's still holding a grudge against us. The group groaned, Hiruzen was still being a sourpuss about them leaving. He just couldn't understand the situation and how important the prophecy was. They haven't heard from him in a few months and they haven't received any updates on Naruto either. Tsunade betted it was Orochimaru that prevented any letters from reaching them. Minato, I have a strange feeling that Naruto might come to hate us, Kashina cried. Minato placed his arm around his wife's shoulder to comfort her, it's alright darling if he does hate us, then we will do everything in our power to get him to forgive us. Trust me I am sure that our son will not hate us. Minato is right Kashina, once we explain the situation then Naruto will understand, besides he's probably enjoying his life as the hero who kept the village safe from the Nine Tails. Jiraiya stated firmly and jokingly. Suddenly there was a raven upon their windowsill with a scroll attached to its leg. It was an Achiha raven due to the Sharingan eyes. It was used by the Hakage to send private messages. Everyone wondered why Hiruzen would send them a letter now of all times, since he didn't want anything to do with them. Kashina placed her hand on his shoulder to calm him. Minato took all deep breaths as he unrolled the scroll and began to read. Dear Minato and Kashina, you got some nerve to think so little about your son. Naruto is more than just a support ninja. Naruto is an innocent soul, and I won't tolerate you tainting that light. Also I'm not Hiruzen, I'm the new Hakage who replaced your sorry ass. I've also placed Naruto under mine and my wife's care. We will take care of him since you're too lazy to take care of both of your kids. And you Kashina, well my wife is in Yuzumaki, and unlike you she knows what it means to be in Yuzumaki. You Tsunade, I am ashamed of you, to think you'd sink this low, you disgust me, you better hope I don't get my hands on you. Naruto is no longer yours, he's my son now. I'll be the father you refuse to be Minato. See you in 13 years Yandame, because believe me Minato you won't be getting a warm welcome. Sincerely, Nod. The new Hakage. Silence filled the group with the information. First off they were shocked that Hiruzen replaced Minato so quickly. 
to think the old man was angry enough to go that far to get back at them. Another thing that horrified them was that Naruto was adopted by the new Hakage and his wife, who just happened to be an Uzumaki woman. Tsunade was pissed that the new Hakage would dare threaten her with bodily harm, new Hakage or not, she would make sure she pounded his face in. The bastard didn't even sign his name. That bastard Hiruzen, how dare he give away my son to someone else. We told him to leave Naruto in an orphanage so he would be safe. But now Naruto's new parents are threatening us and keeping us from seeing him again. Kishina growled as her hair split into nine strands. He's my baby, Naruto is my baby, only I can be his mother. No one can love him like I do. Minato on the other hand was confused with the threat the new Hakage made against him. Something about not getting a warm welcome when he comes back. Whatever this guy is, Hiruzen must have revealed the prophecy and their plan to the new Hakage. This was a bad prophecy, and Naruto's heritage was supposed to be a secret until they came back. Gareya was the same way, this whole plan they put together was to be kept secret, but now that Hiruzen had blabbed it to the new Hakage, they would have to rethink of a solution to ensure everything they worked for wouldn't unravel. Sensei really is out to get us, Jiraiya sighed. To think he went this far. No joke, Sune growled, taking a gulp of her sake. I bet he made Arachimaru the new Hakage. But I agree with, Minato chuckled. Only he would use threats like this. I say we go back there and pound that snake into paste Kashina snarled, flipping the table over. No Kashina we got the prophecy to think about. We must make sure Menma is ready to defeat the great evil and bring peace to the nations. Minato reminded her. Kashina sighed fine, but I don't like it. But when we get back to the village, I will be the first one to beat the snake. Of course Kushi-chan Minato smiled. Now let's just enjoy our lunch. Asharama smiled as he watched his son cuddle up Shira in his arms and giggling happily as he chased her around crawling and giggling. The tiger cub loved playing with the senju air. Mito was watching and loved how happy her son was. After a while she stood up walking towards her little bundle of joy and crouched down and opened her arms as she urged for him to come to her. Naruto immediately forgot all about the tiger cub and began to crawl happily to his mommy. She opened her arms again and he started crawling to her. She stepped back a few steps giggling as Naruto sat down puffing his cheeks, making him look all the more adorable. Kakashi sat to the side as he watched the mother son duo playing. He saw Lady Mito teasing the boy and laughed as he saw Naruto puffing his cheeks at her teasing. He saw that he never cried, no matter how much she teased him the most that she could get out of him was puffing off his cheeks. Opening her arms again and saw Naruto put his hands to the ground and stood up with shaking legs as he took a step towards her and her eyes widened. Hashirama smiled as he got to his feet and got out the camera as he saw Naruto take his first step. Mito's eyes watered as she saw him take his first step and she saw him take another and saw he was watching her sadly and was confused but urged for him to come to her. Come on Naruchin just a bit more. Come to Kachin. She said through a sob. Naruto took five steps and stumbled as she grabbed her in his arms before he fell down and saw him gazing at her curiously. He put his little hand on her cheek and wiped the tear away. Oh god Nerichin you walk so far on your first time. Oh my boy I love you so much. She whispered and he snuggled in her arms making her smile. She gazed into his eyes that always drew her to him as she kissed him on the nose as he scrunched his face a bit and she giggled. Oh you're Kachan's adorable little boy now, aren't you Nerichin, aren't you? She cooed and kissed him as he giggled. Mama happy, Naruto cooed. Mito gasped you Naruto you said your first word. Mommy love you, Mito squealed as she hugged him tightly. Woo oh Naruto I'm so proud of you. Woo oh I'm so so proud. She cried. Asharama sweat drop geezer dramatic much Mito chan. Shut up Asharama, Mito shouted, making her husband hold up his hands in defense. Oh you heard me at home. He laughed. Besides, I got a little present for Naruto. Shizun helped me pick it out. He asked and pulled out a small wrapped bundle and handed it to her as she saw was a little nine-tailed fox pajamas with some stuffed animals. Ooh Naruto look, Mito said, showing Naruto his presence. Naruto cooed and reached into the box and pulled out a big tiger plush. He giggled happily and cuddled it. Mito smiled as she picked him up and headed to the porch for a drink with her husband. They had hot chocolate and enjoyed the serene silence until an Anbu appeared. Lord Hashirama, Jiraiya was spotted outside of the main gate. He's demanding to see the Hakage and to check up on Naruto. Akashi come with me, Hashirama snarled, standing up. It's time we greet Jiraiya, but I can't reveal myself yet so. Hashirama turned into a young man in his late twenties with short brown hair and blue eyes. He wore a traditional black silk kimono with a white sash across his waist. Hi Hakage-sama, Kakashi said following him. Mito clutched her baby to her chest protectively as she growled at the mention of Jiraiya. There was no way that she was going to allow that toad sage anywhere near her baby. The Noha village gates. Jiraiya arrived at the village gates after a few days walk from the fire capital. He was on orders from his student to find out the identity of the new Hakage who had taken Naruto from him and Kishina. 
the news of Naruto being given to another family put a huge dent into the prophecy. According to the Toads a few days after living in the fire capital, the Toads foresaw an event that would turn the tide of the world. The Toad Sage told them that if the Chosen One loses their other half, he will fall into darkness. They believed that if Menma loses Naruto to another family, then Menma would lose his other half of himself and fall to darkness. But what he didn't know was that the prophecy actually meant Kagaya and Naruto since Kagaya became half of Naruto. Reaching the village gates he was greeted by the two Chunins. All who goes there. Jiraiya of the I have come to see the new Hakage and to check up on Naruto. Naruto-sama is fine Jiraiya. Naruto-sama. Wow the brat must really be enjoying his hero status if this is how the village spoils him. I'll take it from here gentlemen a voice called out. Jiraiya and the guards turned to see the Hakage dressed in his robes with Kakashi at his side. Lord Hakage they saluted. At ease Hashirama smiled. Hashirama took one look at Jiraiya and tried to keep his anger in check. He was face to face with a man who drove a wedge within the Namika's family. The man who agreed that Naruto should be left behind so his more powerful brother would be trained to control the fox's chakra. So you're the new Hakage? Jiraiya asked bluntly. And you're the gallant mighty Jiraiya Hashirama asked. I see you in awe of my mighty reputation. Jiraiya boasted. You mean as a perverted hermit who peeks on women in bathhouses? And who writes that filthy smut which I might add is insulting to women? Hashirama pointed out coldly. Jiraiya felt like a sword was running through his heart. This man clearly didn't see the mighty shinobi that was the mighty toad sage. I'll have you know I'm the teacher of the fourth Hakage and the child of prophecy Menmanamikas. The sage praised. You mean the bastard who abandoned our village when we were still weak after the Kaiubi attack. They shouted. Minato had urgent business to take care of and he left here as in sensei to take over until the business was finished. Jiraiya takes offense to the insult to his old student. The rebuilding of our village was supposed to be Minato's business. Hashirama snarled back. That blonde bastard was a coward. He fled instead of helping us in case another village attacked us. Minato saved your sorry asses from the Ninetales, something none of you could ever accomplish in your entire lives, Jiraiya retorted. Minato sensei was a coward and then abandoned one of his children because of a prophecy told by you and the old toad sage. Kakashi spoke out in a cold tone making Jiraiya flinch. Jiraiya gasped. Kakashi, that's your sensei you're talking about, the man who took you in and raised you like his own son. That man is no longer my sensei, Kakashi shouted. The day he abandoned his youngest son and the village was the day he abandoned me. Uo and the bastard can take this back. Kakashi tossed a three-pronged kunai Minato gave him for graduation to the ground in front of Jiraiya and stomped it into the dirt. Kakashi, Jiraiya said softly. Now what brings you back to the village? They asked. I have come here to check up on Naruto for Minato and Kishina. Jiraiya replied. I am the boy's godfather after all. You are not going anywhere near my son, you filthy toad. Hashirama hissed. Your son? Jiraiya asked. Oh that's right you're the one who adopted the boy. Well duh I made that clear in my letter or is your eyesight as bad as your luck with dating a woman? Hashirama seed burning Jiraiya. The toad sage couldn't believe that he just got burned by the Hakage's insult. That man had a lot of nerve to talk to the great Jiraiya that way. I don't care who you are, but no one speaks to you that way. As I can tell you are a first time Hakage and your chakra level says you're at least level. I'm on a whole different level. Your arrogance speaks for itself. Kakashi scoffed. Here's what's going to happen, you're going to turn around and go back to the fire capital. Then you'll go back to your old student and his wife and tell them that if any of them try anything against me and my wife or take away Naruto. I will ensure that they are dealt with the harshest punishment known to man, along with a special session with Ibiki and Anko when they have a bad day. After Ibiki and Anko are demons when they work on a bad day. Hashirama shouted with fury in his dark cold ice tone. Who do you think you are? Jiraiya shouted. They were going to attack before Hashirama stopped them and glared at the arrogant toad sage. Not wanting to reveal his true former name just yet he decided to give him a fake name to use. My name is Meru Senju, Hashirama lied. Senju you're a Senju? Yes I am, why did you think the Senjus died out? Besides Tsunade and her family yes I did. Well now you know and now you can go to Jiraiya. Kakashi escorted him out. Hi Lord Senju, Kakashi said before facing Jiraiya. Alright you old toad come on. Kakashi, you can't blame your sensei for what happened, Jiraiya pleaded. Please see reason. We all saw reason and we have renounced Minato as our Wawat. What nonsense are you talking about? Jiraiya demanded. Take a look at the Hakage monument, Kakashi said, pointing towards the mountain. Gazing at the Hakage's mountain he gasped as he noticed that Minato's stone face wasn't there. What happened to his student stone face on the Hakage's monument? What happened to Minato's face on the Hakage's mountain? Jiraiya stuttered. The villagers tore it down. What? Why would they do that? What did Minato do to deserve this? He abandoned us and his son in our weakened state. Kakashi hissed. Now I'll escort you to the fire capital, but after that you're on your own. 
Gareya wasn't given another second to speak, as the two Chunins joined Kakashi in escorting him to the fire capital. Hashirama sighed as he wiped his forehead. Damn that was close. It's times like this I wish Madara was still here. Hashirama groaned as he left to go to the office to deal with the council, mostly the civilians. Ever since Hashirama replaced the old civilian council the former members were using some of their former, they still had to make demands to make things better for the civilian portion of the village. Plus Hamura and Kaharu weren't making it any easier. Thankfully Danzo managed to keep his old teammates in line. As Hashirama walked down the street he passed Danzo. Make sure Jiraiya and his students don't plot anything behind my back. Have Root follow them and if they prove a threat to my village or my son kill them. Hashirama whispered. You don't even have to ask me twice and say Danzo replied as the two men continued on their way. Back with Kakashi and the Chunins they escorted Jiraiya as far as they were allowed. Jiraiya told him he can get to the Namaka's compound in the fire capital from where they were. They just nodded and turned to head home. This was bad Uo so very bad not only for the prophecy, but also for Minato and his family. Since the reveal of Minato's stone face torn off the mountain and the villagers doubt about their greatest Takage. He needed to talk to Minato and somehow win back the praise of the people. Without a second more he dashed off towards the capital. Namika's clan compound. Minato and Kashina were in their clan training ground as Kushin was training with her sensei Tsunade. The two women were fighting using their clan's Tejutsu styles, the Whirlpool Storm style, and the Senja Spirit Tiger style. Arg yelled Tsunade as Kashina landed a good kick to her midsection. You're still as strong as always. Kashina smiled as he panted. Thanks, sensei. I can see that despite your old age you're still as strong and hardcore as always. Minato was watching them harness their skills as he was going over training regiments for his son Menma when he reached the age of four. However his mind was drifting off towards his other son Naruto, the boy he left behind. Ever since he received that letter from the new Hakage Minato had lost some of his confidence since losing his position of Hakage and his youngest at the same time was a low blow to his pride. Now that Naruto was now legally with new parents, he won't be able to help Menma like he was destined to do. This put their plans in a rut, the plan was to come back and bring Naruto back into the family and then make him the head of the Namika's side branch. It was similar to the Hyuga side branch, but unlike them they don't have a cage bird seal. Suddenly a medium side toad dropped down in the training grounds as Jiraiya dropped down from the back of the toad. Minato jumped up and rushed to greet his sensei. Jiraiya sensei welcome back, how was your trip to Konoha? Did you speak with the new Hakage and got to check up on Naruto? Yes I met the Hakage and I found that he's a senju like yourself and Tsunade. Another senju? Swan gasped. Are you sure? Yes he might be lying, but Kakashi confirmed it by calling him Lord Senju. How is Kakashi doing? Minato asked about his student. Kakashi believed you abandoned the village and he hates you for it. What? Minato and Kashina shouted. Yeah he wanted you to have this, Jiraiya said, giving Minato his three-pronged kunai. Minato took the kunai in his shaking hands. His student hated him now. Was everyone he knew going to hate him now for trying to save the world from total destruction? Also Minato, that's not the worst of it, Jiraiya sighed. What's the worst of it then you old pervert? Swan asked. The villagers tore down Minato's stone face from the Hakage's monument. The group's expression was filled with shock, horror, sadness, and betrayal. The villagers that Minato saved from the Nine Tails tore down his stone face off the monument, which meant they renounced him. Minato felt betrayed by his own village, Kashina on the other hand was furious that the villagers would treat them like this after they saved them from the Kaiubi. Tsune didn't know what to think, but she strongly believed Orochimaru had a hand in this. Who bets it was Orochimaru who convinced them to tear down Minato's face? Tsune seed. I do, Kashina hissed. I am beginning to believe it as well. Since Orochimaru hated me ever since he lost the Hakage election years ago. Talk about being a sore loser. Minato grumbled. Looks like we will have to win back the hearts of the people when we come back. We can also get the daimyo involved, but I have a feeling we shouldn't since Hiruzen and the new Hakage would persuade the daimyo to join their side. Then what do you do? Kishina asked. We wait. Minato smiled. After 13 years they will all calm down and we can fix the situation when we come home. Because no matter how bad it is I won't abandon my village. Spoken like a true shinobi Minato, Jiraiya praised. I raised you with good morals. Indeed you did sensei Minato chuckled. Indeed you did. It was a bright morning in Kanoha as the birds were singing and the sun was shining upon the senju compound. Mito Senju was sleeping peacefully next to her husband as she felt a light tap on her cheek. She opened her eyes and saw her ball of sunshine wide awake and gazing at her brightly. He kissed her softly making her smile as she wrapped her arms around him and rubbed his back. Morning Kasa Naruto smiled while holding his big tiger plushie. Morning little tiger Mito yawned as she sat up and yawned. The day is the day I finally get to train to be a ninja, he said, jumping up and down in excitement. 
So Narachan is excited about his training now, isn't he? She asked softly and he nodded in her neck making her smile. She sat up and put him on her lap as she brushed his hair softly. So Kachin, what will you teach me today? He asked and she smiled. Well Naruto, your father, I am going to try and unlock your chakra. She said and he nodded beaming happily. That's the life energy that we use to do jutsu isn't it Kachin? He asked and she giggled and nodded. Hi, you're a smart boy Sachi. Today I'll tell you what chakra is and how to unlock and use it a bit. Nito smiled. But first your father needs to wake up first. She said looking over at her sleeping husband. Ashirama snored loudly as Naruto jumped off his mom's lap and crawled on top of his dad and poked his cheek. Dusan, he whispered. Tausan, wake up, it's time to wake up. Ashirama grumbled as he put his pillow over his head, groaning. Naruto crawled closer as he pushed his little head under the pillow. Tausan Naruto said as Hashirama woke up. Nito laughed as Hashirama pulled off his pillow and sat up. Rubbing his eyes he noticed his six-year-old son sitting on his lap. Chuckling he picked him up and gave him a hug. Talk about a good wake-up call he chuckled. Sorry daddy, but mommy said you must never oversleep especially if you're the Hakage, Naruto chuckled. You are more like your mother every day, said Hashirama. Nito laughed as she dressed in her clothes and picked Naruto up and went towards the kitchen and prepared breakfast for them. Saying their thanks they dug in as Naruto loved his mother's cooking. Nito was a great cook much better than her husband. The last time Hashirama cooked it wasn't exactly good, edible but not that good. So Naruto, do you have any plans after your training today? Nito asked. I'm going to visit Sasuke, he and I are going to hang out today. Naruto answered. Have you spoken with Makoto first? Yes Kasan. I spoke with Auntie Makoto yesterday and she said yes. Well as long as she says it's okay that's fine, but Fugaku-san doesn't seem to like me that much. Nito put down her fork as her son brought up Fugaku. What did that Ichiha theme do now? She knew that Fugaku had to pull up his ass knowing his arrogance and his superiority complex should be considered a bloodline since he's a master at having a godlike complex. What did that Torag do now? Nito asked. When I went to see Sasuke to hang out with him, Fugaku said that Sasuke was busy and didn't have time for Senju scum. He then kicked me out of the compound and slammed the door in my face. Nito slammed her hands on the table rattling the silverware. Hashirama took notice of his wife's expression. He noticed her mouth was curling into a snarl. He knew Fugaku was a taboo in her house and any mention of him was enough to piss her off. Did he hurt you? Nito said with a soft growl. Naruto gulped seeing his mom this angry. He held his tiger plush in front of his face to hide himself from his mom's angry look. He only pushed me mommy, he said. The sound of a chair being knocked over was heard as Hashirama called out to his wife who was heading towards the door. Nito ignored her husband's shouts for her to come back. The angry Uzumaki matriarch slammed the door shut and was now on her vengeful way to the compound. Mommy is scary, Naruto shivered. Yes she is Sachi. Let this be a lesson to you and me, never anger your mom. He then took him to the old Senju grounds and sat under a tree as his son sat down cross-legged beside him. Alright son now I'll explain the theory of chakra, listen to everything carefully and ask me whatever you don't understand alright? He asked. Yes father he nodded, giving his dad his full attention. Alright Naruto, chakra is the primary source of energy used by shinobi to enhance their skills. It consists of two halves. Spiritual and physical energy right? Naruto pointed out. Exactly, mmmmm for a six year old you're quite smart. Hashirama complimented. Spiritual energy consists of our yin chakra, which is the power of the mind and of one's essence. It is developed through amassing knowledge over the years and can be increased through studying, concentrating and meditating, and builds up with experience. He explained pausing to see if Naruto understood everything and got a nod in return physical energy is the yang chakra, which is the power of one's body and the physical essence. It is developed through intense training of the body and can be increased with the increase in one's stamina and other physical traits. Then when the two energies are together chakra is formed. Naruto cheered. Right son they can be used separately too, but the skill and control required to use even one of them separately is beyond what most shinobi can use. I understand dad. Alright then now we will try and unlock your chakra Naruto. He said as Naruto grinned foxily in excitement making him smile. Relax your body and close your eyes. Keep your focus on yourself and nothing else and try and find a warm pool near your tummy alright. Naruto nodded as his father told him and sat like that for half an hour meditating. He tried to connect into his spiritual and physical energy. He knew not many could unlock it on their first try, but Naruto wouldn't give up. He opened his eyes and looked up as Hashirama patted his head. It's alright Narachan, rarely anyone gets their chakra unlocked on their first try, try it again alright. He said and Naruto smiled back. Oh I gotta head to the office. We can continue the lesson later when I get back or when your mom gets back. Okay Taos and I'll stay here and continue to try and unlock my chakra. 
alright don't strain yourself and I'll send for Shizun to look after you and then take you to the Achehas to see Sasuke. He kissed his forehead and left for the Hakage's office. Naruto took a small breath and closed his eyes and focused on his inner spirit. The chakra within his body was moving within his chakra network, as the white chakra was trying to break through his chakra paths and chakra gates. His blue chakra, or the physical part of his chakra, was fighting against the white chakra which was full of spiritual energy. Wow, talk about an inner spiritual war. However the white chakra broke through the chakra gates and flooded his system, engulfing his body. This chakra feels sentient. Its power feels celestial, Naruto thought. Naruto's mindscape, unknown to him Naruto was taken within his mindscape. The redhead gasped as he opened his eyes to reveal a dark area with darkness that went for miles. He called out for anyone, but his voice echoed for miles. No one responded as he continued to walk forward into the darkness before him. He felt like he was walking for hours when he was stopped by a bright light. The light shined from above as it revealed a strong oak tree. This was strange to Naruto and approached it with caution. Approaching it, he laid a hand on it as he felt powerful chakra from it. This power it's the same as I felt before, Naruto gasped. Where am I? From atop the tree he saw a shining star descending from the sky. Naruto gazed upon it as it landed a few feet away from him. Holding his hand on his forehead to cut down the glare of the light he tried to make it out. The light died down taking the form of a woman in her late thirties. She had long white hair that went down to her feet, her flawless skin was soft as silk, and her eyes white pale white similar to the Hyuga's bloodline. One thing for sure she was beautiful. The woman stepped forward and approached the tree only to find him standing before it. Approaching the boy she knelt down and cupped his head in her hands. Agaromo? Hamura? She asked. No Indra Ashura, was this woman confusing him with someone else? Your chakra is the same as my son's, but you are not my son she said, confusing him. No my lady, my name is Naruto Senju Uzumaki, he introduced himself. Uzumaki. Senju. The descendants of Ashura, pardon me my lady, I didn't mean to intrude, I somehow ended up here, and I have no idea where this is, Naruto apologized. You are in your own mind. She answered. This is your mindscape. How did I end up here? It seems your chakra or something else called you here. But how are you here? Are you part of my mindscape? I have no idea how I am here, but if I were to guess I must have been sealed inside of you, huh? Why would a beautiful lady like you be sealed inside of me? Beautiful. She blushed. This child is something else. Madam are you okay? Naruto asked. Kagaya, huh? My name is Kagaya Tsutsuki. I'm the mother of all chakra. Naruto gasped in shock. He had the mother of chakra itself sealed inside of him. Normally anyone would be prideful and want to use this power to show their superiority over the rest of the shinobi. But Naruto was different, his father used to say, the prideful are powerful, but their arrogance becomes their downfall. Basically speaking no matter how powerful you are, the outcome depends on how you use it. Naruto went down to his knees in respect. Gaia, I am honored to be in your presence. Naruto praised her. Child, stand up, do not bow. Well I appreciate the respect, you shouldn't treat me like royalty. Said Kagaya. But my parents said those of great importance must be shown the proper respect. You certainly were raised right, Kagaya chuckled. That's because he was raised right by actual parents a voice spoke out making them look around. Who's there? Naruto called out. Look behind the tree. Naruto and Kagaya walked towards the darkness behind the tree and soon came to a giant gate. The gate was made of solid chakra steel-like bars with a giant circular seal on the center of the gate, with a kanji tag for seal on it. Naruto wondered where this door even came from. Red chakra formed eyes and a mouth spooking Naruto a bit. Who are you? Naruto asked frighteningly. My jailer has finally come to greet me after six long years. The voice chuckled. Jailer. Wait, you're sealed inside of me too. Correct, I'm Kayubi no Kitsune, the most powerful of the tailed beast, Kayubi smirked. Wait, you mean the Kayubi? The mighty nine-tailed fox that can cause massive tsunamis with a swat of its tails and can level mountains. Naruto shouted excitedly. Kaiubi sweat dropped at the brat's excitement and the praise that went with it. Was this brat actually praising him for his power and strength, usually humans despise the tail beasts. But this brat was just looking at him with stars in his eyes. Here's something else. Normally people would cower in fear of me or try to use me as a weapon. That's terrible to treat a sentient being in such a manner Naruto shouted, shocking Kaiubi and Kagaya. But how are you inside of me? We were told that you were sealed into the fourth Hakage's kid. Well first I was forced to attack the village after I was ripped out of Kashina Yuzumaki, my previous. I was placed under by that bastard Ichiha. I couldn't control myself and almost brought the village to its destruction until the Yandame interfered. Minato Namikas used the Reaper Death Seal to split me in half. My chakra into his eldest Memma and his youngest son, you. Wah? Wow. What did you say? Naruto gasped. Minato and Kashina are your birth parents. But they abandoned you to train your brother Menma to control my chakra. 
Naruto backed away as he clutched his head at what he was told. No, it couldn't be true his mommy and daddy were Hashirama and Mido. He cried as he looked at the fox. You're lying. My parents are Hashirama and Mido, not the fourth and his wife. He cried. Git. I was sealed inside of you, I heard the entire thing when I was inside of you. Kayubi roared. It can't be true Naruto sobbed till he felt Kagaya's arms around him pulling him into a hug. It can't be true, it's a true little one. That bastard and bitch abandoned you as if you meant nothing to them. But thankfully Shinigami took pity on you and gave you a new family. What do you mean? Naruto wanted answers. Ayubi spent the next hour explaining the whole situation from the ceiling to his abandonment at the hands of his old parents. Taking all that the Kaiubi told him, Naruto felt hatred for his old parents. But now he didn't care anymore, he had new parents, thanks to the death god he carried Mido and Hashirama's blood. They were his real parents, the Yandame, and his wife could go fuck themselves. He thanked the fox for telling him the truth. Thank you for telling me the truth. Naruto thanked the fox. You deserve the truth Kit, Kaiubi said with sympathy. And you deserve more, Naruto said he asked Kagaya to take him up to the seal tag. Kagaya floated up to the seal tag as Naruto tore the paper off. Kaiubi gasped, wondering what he was up to. Naruto asked Kagaya how he could undo the seal, since he hasn't begun Fuinjutsu training. Kagaya explained as best she found for him to understand. The boy reached out and gripped his belly and turned the seal as the mechanical seal was beginning to unwind. The gates then swung open as the fox took his first step out. Why would you free me? I attacked your village, I killed many of your fellow ninjas, and I'm one of the reasons your parents abandoned you. Kaiubi wanted to know why Naruto would free him. Naruto smiled up at him. It's simple Kaiubi-san, you were forced to attack devoid of your own free will. My sockled birth parents made their choice. I got Hashirama Tusan and Mito Kachan. I don't need Namikazes in my life. I never met a human like you, Naruto. I have a feeling we will be good friends. There is nothing I would like more than that. And don't worry I'll find a way to get your chakra back. That's my ninja way believe it Naruto promised giving his classic foxy grin. Well you better get back, I sense a human's presence coming towards you. Kagaya said. Will I ever see you two again? Naruto asked. Anytime you wish to see us, just focus your chakra and come into your mindscape. We'll be here when you come back. Kagaya smiled before kissing his forehead making Naruto blush. The boy smiled with a goofy grin before fading away. Kagaya, unknown to Naruto, left him a little gift. Real world. Senju training grounds. Naruto soon found himself staring into the face of Shizun and Mido smiling down at him. Laughing at the reading, he greeted his mom and aunt Shizun. Well hello there sleepyhead Mido smiled. Enjoy your nap. Mom, I have so much to tell you. I unlocked my chakra and I met the most amazing people in the world. Looking confused, Naruto told them about how he met Kagaya and the Kaiubi. Mido was shocked that Kaiubi told Naruto about his former parents but was happy that he considered her and Hashirama his real parents. She was also shocked when Naruto told her about Kagaya Utsutsuki, the mother of all chakra. With his newfound power Naruto could be the second coming of Kagaya herself. Hachan were you really Kaiubi's first? Yes Naruto I was. Mom, can I let him out? I don't want Kaiubi to be sealed anymore. He's a living sentient being like we are. Uo Naruto I wish we could, but if a tailed beast is removed from their container, the container dies. Mido answered him grimly. Then I'll find a safer way someday. I promised Kaiubi I would help him regain his powers and let him free. Why would you promise him that? Shizun asked. Because he's my friend, Naruto smiled. Shizun and Mido were shocked beyond belief. Did Naruto just say he and Kaiubi were friends? Wow this boy brings new surprises into their lives each and every day. Well now that you're here. Can we go to the compound now? I want to see Sasuke. Ahahaha <laughs> okay let's go. Mido smiled as Shizun put Naruto on her back. Naruto loved piggyback rides from his parents, especially from Shizun. Shizun and Mido left the Senju compound with Naruto and headed towards the Ichiha compound. Ichiha compound. Sasuke was panting on the docks as he was once again trying to impress his father with a grand fireball jutsu. But like always the fireball only came out in the form of a small ball of fire. Tugaku sighed in agitation at his youngest son's failure once again in the Ichiha's prized fire technique. Tsutsuki, Sasuke's twin sister, managed to do it at the age of five, and Itachi did it at the age of six. But his youngest son failed the jutsu time and time again. Once again you failed Sasuke and wasted my time. Tugaku sighed. If you keep failing like this you'll never be like your twin sister and older brother. Sasuke froze at the mention of his prodigy twin sister and older brother. Every single day of his life since he unlocked his chakra, he was always being compared to his siblings, as if his skills weren't good enough. Seeing that Sasuke wasn't going to respond, Fugaku turned to leave to see how Satsuki was doing. When you learn to master the grand fireball jutsu, come find me. Fugaku said coldly. 
Besides I got to check up on Satsuki, she's going to show me her skills with the fire style phoenix flower jutsu. You could learn a lot from her. He finished before leaving. Sasuke grit his teeth and clenched his fists as blood seeped from his fingernails digging into the skin. He had it with being compared to his arrogant twin sister. He screamed as he punched the ground making the ground shake. Itachi felt the shake when walking by the house and turned to look at Sasuke. The young Ichiha went through hand signs and gathered his chakra, he gathered his emotions, his rage, his hatred, and unleashed the grand fireball jutsu, only they were the wrong hand signs, and he actually unleashed the fire style great devastation move while setting the entire lake ablaze. Itachi was shocked that his brother managed to gather so much chakra to perform Madara's signature move of all things. Rushing over Itachi caught Sasuke before he collapsed. Ooh Sasuke, foolish little brother, Itachi sighed as he took his brother into the house to tend to him. Unknown to either Ichiha, a figure was watching from the shadows, and he was impressed with young Sasuke's ability to use his move. The man in the shadows was none other than the legendary Madara Ichiha. The Ichiha compound being overpacked was an understatement. If anyone didn't know better, they would assume the entire village had come for the party. Plus members from every main clan had made it to the gathering. Included in those were Hashirama Senju and his wife and son. It was the birthday of Sasuke and Satsuki Ichiha, except the party was mostly focused on Satsuki, the prodigy twin. Yugaku, still being the arrogant Torang who believed power over hard work was beaming with pride at his daughter, his favorite. He quickly noticed that many important figures arrived at the party, hell even the fire daimyo even came. This party will show the most important people in the country what my pride and joy Satsuki can offer them. This will bring the name to far greater heights than this small cesspool of a village Fugaku thought boastfully. The guests all arrived as Makoto greeted them. Nido Senju greeted her with a warm smile, and Naruto gave her a lily from his little garden at home. The Ichiha matriarch accepted the flower with gratitude and gave Naruto a small kiss on the cheek. Thank you Naruto, Makoto said. You're welcome auntie, is Sasuke here? Oh why yes he's in the training ground on the east side of our house. But he's been a little down in the dumps today. What? Why would Sasuke miss his own party? Naruto asked. It's strange that a child wouldn't attend his own birthday party, Hashirama stated, getting confused. Well fuck I made the party focus more on his daughter than both of them. You know how he is Makoto said in irritation. Sasuke kinda outgrown birthday parties and he asked that we stop celebrating it if all Fugaku cares about is Satsuki. Speaking of Fugaku, where is he? Mito asked sweetly. I need to talk to him for a little bit. Knowing what Mito had planned, she pointed to her husband who was speaking with Daimyo. Thanking Makoto with a nod, she walked off to talk to Fugaku about a certain incident a few days ago. Fugaku was chatting arrogantly, spouting off about the might of the clan and the skills of his two eldest children. He went into full detail about Itachi mostly. But then went into detail of his daughter's prodigal skills. I can assure you Daimyo-sama, Satsuki and Itachi are the best of their generation. Fugaku spoke pridefully. I know Itachi well and his skills, especially with his shinobi record. Daimyo chuckled. But Satsuki, well I'll have to wait and see. Fugaku. Mito shouted, getting everyone's attention. What is Mito-chan? Fugaku asked. His only response was a punch across the face shocking and horrifying everyone. Fugaku fumbled back before he was grabbed by the hair and his face was slammed repeatedly into the hardwood table. His face was becoming bruised and swelled up from the impact. She then kicked him into the wall before her hands wrapped around his neck. If you ever lay a hand on my son again, I'll make sure when I'm done with you, the only way anyone will find your remains will be with a microscope. She seethed. Fugaku gagged and struggled to breathe as he tried to pry her hands off. Itachi soon came to his father's rescue telling Mito that it wasn't worth it. His humiliation in front of everyone was punishable enough. Mito glared at the patriarch but released her grip, dropping him to the floor as he tried to gasp for air. You're lucky I appreciate and respect Itachi. Mito snarled before walking away. Itachi sighed you'll be the death of this clan father. If your influence spreads to the rest of the clan, then I fear for its future. Ichiha compound training ground. A sound of a kunai flying through the air could be heard as the kunai pierced into the trunk of a tree, missing the target paper attached to it. Sasuke groaned in frustration that he missed again, but still he wouldn't give up. Grabbing a few more shuriken and kunai, he took a deep red breath before tossing and flinging them towards the target. He managed to get eight tenths this time which brought a smile to his face. Happy birthday Sasuke Naruto called out happily. Unlike most guests, he chose to go and talk to the forgotten Ichiha first. Right behind him followed Kiba. Happy birthday Sasuke, I see you practicing your kunai and shuriken throwing. Keep it up and you'll be as good as Itachi. Kiba said, giving Sasuke a thumbs up. Thanks guys and it's good to see you, especially Senju, Sasuke smiled. Naruto chuckled, giving his goofy grin that everyone seems to like. Your mom told us you were out here training instead of partying. I mean it is your birthday. 
Sasuke sighed, why bother going to a party when all people care about is my prodigy older twin sister. Besides, parties aren't really my thing. What? Kiba asked, confused. But you always like parties dude. Yeah I know but like I said it's always about my sister Itachi. It's never about me. Sasuke replied by picking up his kunai and shuriken. Look, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Tell mom that I'll be okay, I just need time to myself. Well if you think that's best Sasuke will respect your wishes said Kiba. Naruto nodded his head in agreement. Kiba is right, we we'll let you get back to practicing. After they left, Sasuke headed into the middle of the training ground and plopped down under a tree with a prime view of the clouds above him. A shadow was watching from the roof of the compound. Masking his chakra so no one could detect him, he jumped off the roof and landed in front of Sasuke. Sasuke, noticing the figure, jumped up and got into the interceptor to jutsu style. Calm yourself young. I am not here to fight you or to harm you. The man spoke calmly, showing no hostility in his voice. Who are you then? And how did you get here? Sasuke asked demanding answers. I am merely a ghost of the Achiha clan. He said sternly but strongly. I am an old relic of the clan from the time of the clan wars. I was known as the most powerful Ichiha and Sharingan master since Hashirama's time. Sasuke lowered his defense slightly as he looked at the man before him. There was only one Ichiha that was strong enough to rival Hashirama and was given the title of Sharingan master. But this man couldn't possibly be him, Madara Ichiha died when he fought Hashirama in the Valley of End. Are you claiming to be Madara Ichiha? Sasuke scoffed. Everyone knows Madara died by Hashirama's hand. You actually believed what those Senju worshippers wrote in the history books. Fool Hashirama spared my life and sentenced me to exile for at least 25 years. He concocted a fable telling everyone that he killed me in the Valley of End, which apparently the villagers believed. You honestly expect me to believe you? Sasuke yelled. If you really are Madara Echeha, then you would be old and wrinkly by now. Madara laughed in a cold-like way, you got a smart mouth and bravery I'll give you that. You remind me of when I was your age. You think you scare me, huh Mido Senju is scarier than you could ever be? Sasuke taunted. Mido? How would you know that? Madara asked. She and Hashirama-sama were brought back to life by the Shinigami. Hashirama. Is alive. Madara gasped. Yes and they are attending my twin's birthday party right now, their twin. Wouldn't that make it your birthday? Yeah, but the only ones who care are Itachi-san, Kachin, and my two best friends Naruto Senju and Kiba and Yuzuka. Naruto there are still Senjus left around. Yeah as Sasuke said before shaking his head. Wait what am I telling you for? You're an intruder and you must be dealt with. Perhaps you would like proof to prove that I am who I say I am. And Ichiha can masquerade as Madara Sasuke scoffed again. Perhaps this will convince you. Madara said activating his eternal Manjiku Sharingan. Staring into three legendary eyes of the legendary shinobi was more than enough proof since Madara himself was the only one in history to awaken the eternal Manjiku Sharingan, aside from Indra, their ancestor. Dropping his weapon, the young Ichiha got to his knees and showed Madara the utmost respect. Apologize Madara-sama for my disrespect. Sasuke pleaded. You don't need to kneel a child. Although I appreciate the respect, the only people I allow to bow before me are my enemies who cower at my feet. Of course Madara-sama Sasuke shivered at the man's coldness. Now then Sasuke right. I have heard quite a deal about you from me and I have grown ashamed at what kind of man your father had become. It sickens me that he prides himself on power alone and the strength that comes with hard work and relying on your comrades. Father just. Sasuke stuttered trying to get the words to come out. He. Is a coward, Madara shouted. The clan has truly fallen if this is what the future generation will be like. We Achiha are similar to the Yuzumaki clan. We put family first above all else. Apparently from what you told me most of the clan and your father don't value you as they do your sister. Madara sensed a chakra signature coming towards them. Enjoy the party, I have a plan that will set you free from what your father has planned for you. The elder Ichiha stood vanished in a shunshin as Satsuki came rushing out. Sasuke turned to see his sister coming towards him, he didn't have time to deal with her superiority complex. Sasuke Baka, everyone is here. It's time to open our presents. Behind her stood her two friends and two civilians waiting impatiently. Satsuki had an annoyed look on her face, no doubt mad at her and Nikki for taking up so much time. Ichiha compound west area, Sasuke sighed and walked with them. When they arrived at the west side of the house where the party was in full swing, Sasuke stood with Naruto and Kiba. He saw his family walk out and he rushed over struggling to catch up to them in the waves of people. He forced his way to the front, he heard a few calls of happy birthdays to his sister and many compliments. He however got none. It definitely bothered him, but he'd gotten pretty used to it. He noted that his father, mother, sister and big brother stood in front next to the table. On it were many large boxes. No doubt for the Satsuki. He hadn't gotten any presents from the clan minus his mother, brother, Naruto, Kiba, and Lord and Lady Senju. 
but often his father got him at least one gift, even though it was a last-minute gift. Everyone quiet down. Fugaku said to calm the crowd. We're all gathered here today to celebrate the fifth birthday of my twins. For the first presents, I'd like to give Satsuki these. He said while pushing the presents forward. As Satsuki opened them, a big smile appeared on her face. Oh, so cool. Satsuki yelled out. She first pulled out a new set of equipment which were mostly kunai and other stuff. She reached out and pulled out a brand new ceiling kit. No doubt one that cost a fortune. Her father spared no expense on his daughter. All ceiling is an expensive art, your mother and I saved up and decided to buy these for you. Makoto remarked. With a little help from Mito-chan. Satsuki spent a while marveling at the gifts before everyone dispersed, leaving Sasuke alone again. It seemed they really only wanted to gather the crowd's attention for the big surprise presents. Before he could move to find more people, he felt a large hand grab his head and ruffle his hair. You didn't think I forgot about you. He turned around to see his mom grinning down at him. Here you go sweetie he tossed a large parcel to Sasuke. Getting excited he opened the parcel to reveal a long katana shine to a mere sheen. The handle was carved into a dragon head shape with emeralds for the eyes. The sword belonged to Izuna Cheha, Madara's brother. Originally Fugaku was going to give it to his son Itachi, but his eldest turned it down. Then he wanted Satsuki to have it, but Makoto being the descendant of Izuna, had full authority over the possession of the sword and declared it would go to Sasuke. Thank you Kasan. Sasuke thanked her. I'll take good care of Izuna Jiji's sword. He was then greeted by a few people along the way. He saw the Senju family and Naruto. Hashirama gave him a scroll containing Madara's basic firebase level Zeta Air rank. He took the scroll and thanked the Hakage many times. Hashirama chuckled, telling him it was no problem. Next was Naruto who gave Sasuke a raven pendant with the kanji for hope on it. This pendant will remind you that no matter what there is always hope, Naruto smiled. Thank you Naruto, Sasuke replied. Yugaku sensed his youngest looking at him before the boy looked away from him. He could see that his youngest was good friends with the Senju clan and the Hakage himself. This could work to his advantage, especially since Naruto is the heir to the Senju and Uzumaki clan. He could probably have an alliance with Hashirama, perhaps even a marriage contract. Hey Tausen, Sasuke called out hesitantly. I was wondering when we could talk about my training. Yugaku sighed at this. Might as well make it as fast as possible. His son asked him many times in the past, so it was best to let him know how important his sister's training was. Sasuke, I've decided to push back your training till your graduation. Your sister had just started working on the Meteor Fireball Jutsu, which is a powerful and dangerous technique. She's also close to controlling it. I'm sure you remember the incident a week ago. So to prevent it from happening again she needs constant supervision, which the elders will be teaching her. And with me being busy with clan matters and village politics getting tense, and I can't even help your sister, let alone you. Figaku felt all the reasons were justified. Besides, it wasn't like Sasuke would actually wait till graduation. He figured that if he gave his son a date a long way off, he could surprise him by starting it earlier than he promised. Fugaku didn't even have time to gauge Sasuke's reaction, which was one of devastation, before a voice rang out in the room, and it filled with the familiar smell of killer intent. I'll train him if you or the clan can't find the damn time to train him. Stepping into the room was Madara Che. Unbeknownst to Fugaku, Sasuke was praising Kami at the chance to train, if he couldn't with his father, then Madara himself was the next best thing. Madara. Hashirama said, making everyone gasp. The Ichiha clan was in shocked silence, especially Fugaku who was sweating in the presence of the greatest Ichiha to ever live. Madara stood there in all his glory dressed in his clan war's armor. His appearance looked as if he hadn't aged a day. His attitude and expression was still as cold as his heart. It's been a long time Hashirama, so you're finally back from exile. Exile? Mito asked. I thought you killed him. No, that was a lie, Hashirama fed the village to spare me the embarrassment, said Madara. Hashirama spared my life and exiled me from the land of fire to live out my days for 25 years. Now here I am and I come home to see my clan at its lowest. Our clan has been in the best shape for years. Figaku argued. In your eyes maybe, but your treatment of family proves otherwise. Madara shouted, shutting him up. The clan is a clan based off of our sister clan the Uzumaki. We put family first, that means equality and everything. Not that I am happy to see you Madara. But what brings you here? Hashirama asked again. I came across Asuk and he told me about the state of the clan and how his childhood went. I'm very ashamed of my clan right now. So ashamed I can't believe I'm even related to them Madara sneered, shaming the clan and its members. Now as for what I said before I've come to take Sasuke on as my apprentice. Asps were heard among them. Being a student or apprentice of Madara Chiha was an honor in itself. Many from the clan tried many times in the past begging Madara to teach them, but none impressed him enough. 
but here the youngest heir of the clan head got the attention of him which made many in the clan jealous especially Satsuki who was seething. Madara Sama surely my daughter who is a prodigy would be a better choice. Fugaku asked him. Skill alone isn't enough in the field of shinobi. A true shinobi understands and accepts camaraderie. They hold on to what it means to be human. A shinobi puts his comrades, family, and village first. But a shinobi puts his family first above all else no matter what. You raised your daughter to believe that power alone and having the Sharingan makes them superior, that logic there makes me sick. Madara gritted his teeth. But Sasu can barely even perform the fireball jutsu. Figaku stated harshly. I'm telling you he wouldn't be worth your time Madara-sama. I'll be the judge of that, Madara hissed. I chose Sasu because he reminds me of myself. Plus he has a close friendship with Hashirama's kid. He doesn't despise the Senju clan like the clan does now. Sasuke has potential and I look forward to bringing that to the end of the story. Now go back to doing what you do best, pampering your spoiled daughter. Yugaku, not saying anything else, backed off and headed back to socialize with the higher class of people. Sasuke thanked Madara for standing up for him. Madara told him that it was no problem at all. You don't need to thank me, Sasuke. Madara said. Your father and the clan needed a wake-up call. Madara, said Hashirama. Madara noticed Hashirama walking towards him. He noticed that the Senju was getting pretty tense at his reveal. They reached out his hand to him offering him a handshake. He reached out and took the Hakage's hand only to receive a punch to his stomach. Madara grunted before Hashirama hugged him close. You team bastard. You don't know how much I missed you. Hashirama cried. Madara sweat dropped and groaned cut off the waterworks you Senju crybaby and why did you punch me? That was for not returning back when I was first alive and not coming to me when you entered the village today. Hashirama shouted. Madara sighed and face palmed. I knew you would react like this. Which is why I didn't reveal myself to you before. The second reason I didn't come back in the past was because you were dead and Tabarama was the second Hakage. Plus with the history between him and me, I doubt he would have wanted to see me. But all that matters is you're here now and we have much to catch up on, Hashirama smiled. Indeed we do and I look forward to your team meetings like we used to. Madara smirked. So how's Hakage life treating you? Now that you've been brought back to life. Well I hope you like long stories because this one you're going to love. Uh oh I can hardly wait to hear it. After the party was over and everyone dispersed, Sasuke took his gifts to his bedroom and was looking forward to training with Madara Che. Across from his room was Satsuki who was seething in jealousy and hate that Madara chose her lame, stupid, and talentless brother over her. She swore she would prove to Madara that she would be a worthy student of his caliber. Meanwhile at the Hakage's office Madara, Hashirama, and Mito all met for tea, and Hashirama started his explanation of what happened and why he and his wife were brought back to life. After his explanation Madara's facial expression showed a look of rage and anger. Madara crushed his teacup not minding the bleeding and glass that cut into his hand. When will they be back in the village? Madara enraged. You'll see them soon enough, the cage summit is coming up next week. I would like you to join me and Mito at the summit. I'll be glad to tag along, but I promise I won't leave Minato and Kishina unscathed, especially your granddaughter. I wouldn't expect you to, Hashirama sighed. Mommy. Daddy. A hyper five-year-old blonde-haired boy with blue eyes shouted, bouncing up and down on her feet happily. Did you see that? I did the tree climbing exercise. We saw Menma, that was really great. Kishina praised and kissed her son on the forehead. Indeed Menma-sama his co-sensei smiled. You've managed to complete the tree climbing and water walking exercise in record time. You might become level by the time you start the academy in Kanoha next year. The woman was beautiful. She had a slender, a little muscular feminine build, soft skin, brown eyes, golden blonde hair with strands that framed both sides of her face. She wore a black sheer lace tank top and short red shorts. She had a dark rex band on her left wrist and black standard shinobi sandals on her feet. Her name was Minako Namikas, Minato's cousin. Menma gave a big smile to his aunt and said, thanks auntie, I'll become stronger and one day become as powerful as dad. He suddenly felt a hand on top of his head. The boy looked up and smiled at the person whose hand was ruffling his hair. It was a tall man who had fair skin, bright blue eyes, and spiky blonde hair. He was in a standard battle uniform with two bands each on both of his sleeves, a flak jacket, sandals but no forehead protector. He had a long-sleeved long crimson red coat with an amicus symbol on the back over his normal outfit. This man was Hiroku Namikas, his great-grandfather on his father's side, as well as the general of the Fire Daimyo's army. I'm proud of you, my little Flash, Hiroku said, smiling brightly. Soon you'll be a baddest ninja like your old granddad. Sorry to say this grandpa and not to insult you. But you are getting along in years. Have you ever thought of retiring? Minato jokes. Hiroku took it with a scoff. Honest to youngsters these days he thought. 
You would think his grandson would see that despite the old man's age, he was still the greatest general of the modern day in a fire country. The old general began to give his prideful grandson a few words about respect which Minato apologized immediately. He chuckled, holding up his hands as his grandpa kept going with his rambling. Ashina rolled her eyes at this but said nothing. She loved the old man for all he had done for them after they left the village and arrived at the capital. Hiroku understood the entire situation and did everything he could to ensure the prophecy came to fruition. He also agreed with them when he was told they left Naruto back in the village. In her eyes Hiroku was more understanding of the situation than Hiruzen. He also agreed that he would be the one to teach Naruto the skills needed to lead the Namika's clan side branch, since the last one, Minato's uncle, died yesterday. The plan was foolproof as Kashina thought it would allow Naruto to feel part of something greater. He would be able to help his brother save the world but also become the new guardian of the clan. Now to some they would just claim that Naruto will be like his Ashi Hayuga and become nothing more than a servant. But to her it was having Naruto show loyalty to his family. Not to mention Minako had a daughter just around Naruto's age and it was agreed that Naruto and Minako's daughter Miku would marry since Miku and Naruto would rule the side branch together. She also managed to set up an arranged marriage for Naruto with Mila, the niece of the leader of Natashiko. Naruto wouldn't have to worry about finding love. He would have everything he could ever want once he's free from the new Hakage's influence. Anyway hearing enough of their bickering she silenced both men. Alright you two enough of your bickering. Kishina shouted, making them look at her. We need to start training Menma in the family shinobi arts. Yes, what am I going to learn? Menma asked excitedly. Ceiling, Dad's Hiroshina Grandpa's signature lighting style jutsu. Ah had chip off the old block Heroku chuckled. He's just like his grandpa. He better not end up smoking and drinking like you. Kishina groaned. I'm also gonna be the next Hakage. The boy pumped his fist in the air smiling brightly. I'm going to challenge that new Hakage and take that hat in honor of the Namikas. And I'll make them pay for taking Naruto from us. Ashina grinned while pointing a finger at her husband and grandfather-in-law. See, boys. Menma is going to be like his mother. Moving on to her son she knelt down in front of him and put hands on his shoulders. To be Hakage was my dream. I was going to prove to the leaf that even an outsider can accomplish anything. However, my dream was taken from me by your father. She shot a glare at her husband, making the current Hakage nervous. But I'm sure you'll achieve that dream for me. You'll teach that poser Hakage not to mess with his betters, Sunade said arrogantly. You're the prophecy child Menma, and it's your duty to ensure the world lives through the disaster that is yet to come. Said Jiraiya. Minato agreed and joined the three-way hug between his wife and son. Jiraiya and Tsunade joined in. Smiling, they held the prophecy child close. They looked like a good example for a perfect and happy family. They seemed to push the image of a sad red-haired boy to the back of their minds. Holding on to the memory of the boy they left behind was too harmful to their psyche and their lifestyle right now and Menma needed their full attention. Mama, do you think Naruto will like me? Menma asked. Oh Menma honey don't think like that. Of course your little brother will like you. Kishina smiled. It's going to be your job to look out for him once we get back to the village. Remember he won't be as strong as you, so go easy on him when he begins his training. He might be jealous and angry at first, but he will soon come to love you. Your mother is right son. Minato smiled. Naruto will come to understand the situation once we explain it to him. What if my brother won't listen and outright hates us? Menma asked. Then we will do what we can to lessen that hate and try to be there for him as best we can, Kishina answered. You're right I'm the child of prophecy the boy boasted. And I'm an amicus, Senju, and an Yuzumaki. Naruto will come crawling back to us when he witnesses his amazing shinobi skill. I'll show my brother where he belongs. Menma was an arrogant little brat, boasting about his clan and his status. He thinks that his status will get him far in life. Well he will one day come to realize that status and name alone won't be enough on the battlefield. In fact it's people like him who end up getting killed first in battle. The arrogant always meet their end earlier in their lives. As for Naruto, Menma has no idea exactly what kind of power his little brother had. Especially with the power the Shinigami bestowed upon Naruto. Menma and his family would soon learn what happens when you irritate a goddess who spared your life. Oh yes they will learn. Alright now that you got your hands on some of the basic exercises. I think it's time we move on with calling upon the fox's chakra. Jiraiya said, getting an excited reaction from his godson. I'll also be here to contain you with my chains if you lose control, Kishina warned him. Gotcha okay I'm ready for this Menma grinned. Back in Kanoha, Naruto was meditating trying to learn proper chakra control as instructed by his father and uncle Madara. Sasuke was sitting beside him doing the same thing though he was a bit of a faster learner than Naruto was. However Naruto having godlike chakra made it tougher for him to have full control over it. 
I mean when you have the king of the tailed beasts and the mother of all chakras sealed inside of you, then taming that kind of raw power will require a lot of time, effort, and above all control. Alright that's enough mediation for now. Let's move on to your skills in battle. Madara said coldly. Hashirama told me that you Naruto hold two beings of holy sentience within you. So I want you to try and unlock some of the energy in battle. How uncle? Naruto asked. To bring out such energy you need to focus on the chakra itself and fluctuate it throughout your body like normal chakra. He explained. You can also unlock this power through rage, when you're about to die, or in desperation. Madara, he's still a boy, Hashirama scolded him. Unlocking a power such as this at an early age could kill him. I suggest a spar. Very well Hashirama, Sasuke. Hi Madara-sensei. Sasuke said quickly. You will test Naruto's skills. Hi Sasuke replied as he faced Naruto. Both boys gave the sign of camaraderie and got into the tajutsu stance. They charged each other as Sasuke roundhouse kicked Naruto only for the red head to block it with his left elbow. Naruto grabbed hold of Sasuke's leg and prepared himself to toss Sasuke overhead. The boy grunted as the boy sent him flying overhead. Sasuke managed to land on his feet as he skidded back a few inches. The two boys delivered kick after kick, punch after punch, etc etc. They were equal in speed and strength, but Naruto was getting the upper hand which made Sasuke a little angry. The two suddenly felt each other's punches as they skidded back from each other panting. Naruto settled back into the Senju fighting stance as Sasuke took back to his fighting stance. Giving them the signal Sasuke made the first move. He ran toward Naruto to punch him, but he simply moved away from him and slammed Sasuke against the ground. Sasuke quickly pushed himself on all fours and kicked his left leg behind him. A huff told him he had hit the target. He jumped to his feet and noticed that his friend had already recovered from his attack. Naruto then attacked him, throwing some fast punches that Sasuke either blocked or dodged. He never stopped. Sasuke blocked his buddy's hard punches and sent three back and Anita's gut that forced him to his knees. Using this opportunity, he kicked him in the side, sending Naruto rolling a few feet from his previous spot. Not. Bad. Naruto panted. You're. Not. Bad. Yourself, Sasuke replied, panting heavily. Well done, both of you. I've seen some improvement. Sasuke you're getting better with the tajutsu style, but you still leave yourself wide open at times. You underestimate your opponent too much. Naruto you really are good with the senju fighting style. But like Sasuke you underestimated him. Sorry sensei the boys apologized. It's fine, like I said there is room for improvement. Madara sighed. Now let's take a break from lunch, and after that I was 500 push-ups, 300 sit-ups, and about 20 laps around the village. What? The boys shouted. You're a slave driver. Hey the world of shinobi isn't all fun and games, Madara scolded. The bastard emo is right, Naruto, Kurama said in Naruto's head. The shinobi world is a dangerous place. The path of a shinobi is serious, you have to make sure that you're prepared for what lies ahead. And we shall always be there to back you up when you need us the most. Said Kagaya. Thanks guys, Naruto said to himself. The boys groaned as their bodies ached. The elder Ichiha was the roughest and cold-souled person on earth. Hell, even Orochimaru or Anko was this rough when they trained the boys a few days ago. But they were glad to get a break since they trained at 8am in the morning. Settling down with Hashirama and Madara they started to eat their lunch. Hey you say where is Kasan? Naruto asked. Oh your mother had to deal with something. It's nothing you should worry yourself about. Hashirama chuckled. Nido-chan I hope you know what you're doing. But Mido Yuzumaki Senju. Mido was drawing a large seal upon the floor of the Senju clan dojo. It was an old seal that was collecting dust in the Yuzumaki Senju library until Mido herself came upon it. According to the Yuzumaki records it was a summoning seal, but unlike the summing techniques for summoning animals. This one was for summoning the Yuzumaki clan ancestors. Every single clan head since the founding of the clan would be summoned before her. Carefully drawing the symbols not wanting to screw up. Mido was anxious to speak to her ancestors about a serious matter that involved the sacred oath of the Yuzumaki. Upon finishing it Mido knelt in the center of the seal itself and cut her palm. The blade cut a straight line across her hand as she gripped her fist and let the blood seep out and drop onto the center circle between her legs. I Mido Yuzumaki Senju humbly ask for the sacred wisdom of the Yuzumaki that came before me. I seek their help about a serious crime regarding the sacred oath of the Yuzumaki clan. I call upon the former clan heads and the founder herself. Before her stood twelve Yuzumakis, five men and seven women. Many of the men were old due to their longevity, but only two were young, around the age of at least 30 years old. The women on the hand were quite young due to them dying young in their lifetime. However only two of the seven women were old around the age Mido herself was when she first died. The founder herself was a woman of the age of 23, she had short red hair and a feminine slender figure. She wore clan war armor with twin swords strapped over her back. This woman was Anita Yuzumaki and founder of the Yuzumaki clan. 
the ancestors appeared in spirit form. Mito we the ancestors of the clan hear your summons and appear before you. Anita proclaimed. You say that a crime was committed against the clan? An elderly man asked. Yes there is, Mito said grimly. As you know Shinigami-sama brought back myself and Hashirama to the land of the living. We can see that since you've regained your youth. One of the younger male Yuzumaki spirits replied. I am here to bring forth the crimes Kashina Yuzumaki and Tsunade Senju have. Mito said in a harsh tone. Kashina has abandoned her youngest son in favor of a prophecy. What? The spirits reacted. What proof do you have? One of the young female Yuzumaki spirits asked. This is a very serious allegation. Mito explained that the Shinigami told her and Hashirama. Along with what Hiruzen told them. To say the spirits weren't happy was an understatement. No, they were more than just unhappy, they were furious. Each former clan head showed their disgust and disappointment. But the founder herself showed a whole different level of anger. I see the truth in your words and we, the spirits of the clan, shall decide the fate of the criminals. Anita sneered. That's all I ask, Mito said calmly. After a few minutes the spirits were deliberating over what the punishment should be. After all, the punishment must match the severity of the crime. After much consideration they finally agreed on a punishment. It was decided that Kishina and Tsunade would suffer the only punishment that would make even the toughest Yuzumaki break. The spirits and I have decided to punish Kishina and Swan with punishment number 13. Mito gasped since punishment number 13 was only for those that truly have broken the sacred oath that every Yuzumaki takes when they turn 7 years old. But it was up to the spirits and the founder of the Yuzumaki to decide the person's fate. Kishina and Tsunade are henceforth stripped of their Yuzumaki name. Their Yuzumaki blood will become dormant and their reproductive organs shall and will forever become barren. They shall no longer be allowed to bring new life into the world. Anita shouted. May Kami hear our declaration and carry out the will of the ancestors. Somewhere in the fire capital Kishina and Tsunade without their knowledge would be feeling quite a strange feeling in their lower bodies and their chakra reserves. Kishina especially will feel the most different since not only will she not be able to reproduce but her chakra chains will be taken from her as well. The punishment was carried out and Mito thanked her ancestors for what they've done. One of the male Yuzumaki spirits told Mito that because of their removal from the Yuzumaki clan, clan head status soon fell upon her shoulders. Her son Naruto would also inherit the title of Lord Yuzumaki when he reaches the status of or when he turns 16. Mito bowed her head in thanks as the ancestors felt their time in the mortal world fading. They wished her luck as the seal lost his powers and the Yuzumaki spirits returned to the afterlife. Getting up and dusting herself she decided to head out to check on her son and his training. She hoped that Madara didn't train him too hard. Because knowing Madara from her youth she knew what a slave driver he was. An amicus clan gathered in the main building of the compound. The chamber was a round shape room with each clan member seated according to their ranking within the clan. Unlike the Yuzumaki clan the Namikazes settle clan matters differently. Each part of the clan, such as the civilian, shinobi, and elders sectors, deal with matters based on their rank, but the clan head has the final say in any matter they decide. The chamber itself was now filled with exactly 350 namikazes. The center table in the room with three seats was for the clan head, the clan head's wife, and clan heir. The doors opened to reveal Manu Namikaz, the clan head of the namikaz with Minato and Kashina following him behind. The clan stood up in respect as proper protocol. Manu was Minato's uncle on his father's side as the short blonde-haired man took his seat with Minato on his left and Kashina on his right. My fellow clansmen today we are here to discuss a few things that need to come to light. However I have something to do first. For the first clan matter I must address. I have decided to step down as clan head of the Namikas. Manu said, getting a reaction from the clan. Manu you led our clan to greatness these past 30 years. One of them yelled. We can't lose you another shouted. He raised his hands to silence them my fellow friends and shinobi. I have led the clan for a good three decades, but now it's time for someone new to take over. Therefore I name Minato Namikaze as my successor. The clan including Minato himself was shocked in disbelief. The Namikazes knew about Minato's exploits in the Third Great War and his victory over the Ninetales Kaiubi. At first they believed that Minato was still too young, but apparently that changed when he started gaining the favor of the Fire Daimyo. Minato was nervous but at the same time excited. He believed that with his status as Lord Namikaze, he would have some political power needed to get his son back. Kishina was also the same way. She congratulated her husband as Minato took his place in the center. My fellow clansmen, my wife and I are honored. Minato said. As the new head of the Namikaze clan I promise you that I will do everything in my power to ensure the dignity and honor and preservation of the clan. The clan roared in applause as they praised Minato. Now like my uncle said there is a matter that I must bring to the clan. It involves my son Namikaz Yuzumaki Naruto. Whispers and murmurs came from the clan. They've never met this Naruto kid, but they have heard he was the youngest child of Minato. 
they only wondered why their new clan head would bring him up. As you all know, the Kaiubi attacked Kanoha. The clansmen all nodded and acknowledged the incident. Well after the Kaiubi attack my wife and I sealed and split the fox into our two sons Memma and Naruto. Memma received the chakra and Naruto received the soul. Well after the attack the toads came to us about a prophecy regarding one of my sons. We believed it was Memma due to him being the Kaiubi, and so we decided for the safety of our children, we would take Memma with us and leave Naruto to be protected in the village. Minato-sama wouldn't it have been safer for your youngest to be raised along with Memma. We could have had the aid branch look after him. Since the youngest of a pair of twins always goes to the side branch. Said one of the Namaka civilians. We had considered that, but the village needed time to rebuild. So by leaving Naruto there and having his status announced our village would be safe. Kishina answered the civilian. So why are you bringing this up to us? One of the elders asked. The reason being is that Naruto has been adopted into another clan. Minato said grimly. Which clan would that be? The Senju and Yuzumaki clan. Minato said. But Minato is part of the Senju clan aren't you? Since Lady Tsunade is your mother. A woman asked. Yes but I was born from a one night stand not through legal marriage, meaning I'm an illegitimate child. But you're still a Senju. Another Namikaze argued. Yes but apparently the Senju clan lordship was given to the new Hakage of the Leaf, which apparently is a Senju as well. The same Senju who adopted my son. This man robbed Kishina and myself of our youngest child. What were your plans for the child? An elderly woman asked. Naruto was to be trained to become head of the Namika's side branch. Be taught the minor ninjutsu required by clan law to protect the main branch. He will also be taught few ninjutsu by Kishina since he's in Yuzumaki. Once fully trained he will be married to Minako's daughter Miku. Why the Namika's side branch wouldn't Naruto be the Yuzumaki heir? The elderly woman asked again. Since Menma is the Namika's heir. Kishina and I originally were going to name Naruto the Yuzumaki heir. But we decided Menma needed more protection. So we named Menma the Yuzumaki heir as well. So basically you're leaving Naruto with nothing more than enslavement. She said acidly. Watch your tongue, old woman. Manu seethed. The side branch does not question the main branch. I ask you to leave the boy alone. The woman shot back. The woman is Namika's Kushi, one of the oldest but respected members of the clan. I may be a side branch elder, but I speak for the entirety of the clan that the poor deserve better than what we endure which is almost similar to the Hyugas. You're exaggerating Kushi Bachan, Minato said to his grandmother. It's the law of the clan any main branch member who has twins one of them must be sent to the side branch. Manu said with finality in his tone. With all due respect Kushi Sama Kishina said with a bit of respect combined with anger in her voice. Naruto is my child and we decided this will be good for Naruto. He will be able to help Menma fulfill the prophecy and after that he can do what he wishes. But for now Naruto is obligated to follow what Minato and I have set for him. Well it seems Kami Sam's thought is different by giving Naruto a different path. You know as well as I do Kashina that going against Kami doesn't end well with anyone. One of the elders seated right across from her table scoffed. Please Kushi your superstition. Kushi narrowed her eyes and replied with a sharp tone, don't assume anything about me. You know that tempting Kami is dangerous. Or do I need to remind everyone of our clan's home destruction in the first shinobi war? That reminder still haunts the oldest members of the clan, as they remembered how the Namika's clan fell at the hands of the Yuzumaki clan, after the clan head at the time attempted to take the princess of Yuzu by force, due to his lust for her. The princess was raped and killed, and the Yuzumaki clan retaliated, and they and the Senju clan raided the land of wind and destroyed the small village, wiping out most of the clan. They went from over 460 Namika's members to a measly 50 members, 10 men and 40 women. They managed to rebuild their numbers though, and they got their revenge when they heard Yuzushi Agakur fell. The Innamikas growled before answering back don't bring that up. You know that memory was a blemish on the clan's prestige. Kushi replied just as strongly that's precisely my point. Naruto was given a second chance for a better life. So I say we leave him alone. Minato slammed his hand on the table, surprising everyone. Silence. He yelled. I have. Decided on what must be done with Naruto. His stern gaze looked at everyone in the room as they all stayed silent. Kushi waited as part of her knows that whatever decision the clan head makes cannot be challenged. She also knows that Manu absolutely despises disobedience within the clan and will stop at nothing to improve the clan's reputation. She sincerely hoped that Minato would give his little boy a chance. Naruto. She'll be brought back into the clan. Minato decided. Also due to his heritage from my wife and my mother, he will most likely inherit the Mokuten or even the chakra chains, since Menma has too much chakra to activate them due to his condition. So I declare to put Naruto into the Krat to integrate the Mokuten bloodline into the Namika's clan. Applause went around the room, although Haruka sighed wearily and visibly looked her age. I was afraid this would be the verdict. I can only hope the Kami will intervene. 
Buo she didn't ever realize how right she was. Unknown to her kami or should I say the Uzumaki clan heads and founders already took care of the punishment. He will no longer be allowed to carry the Senju name, since he will be a full Namikaze. Kishina added. Kushi mentally scoffed typical I was hoping the clan would change their ways. But it seems that was all it was wishful thinking. Everyone nodded and left the room one by one. After everyone left only Kushi, Kishina, Minato and many were left inside. Is there a reason for you to stay with your mother? Manu asked curiously. Kushi stared at them all, making them all nervous. Just because she was old didn't mean she was powerless, both diplomatically and in combat. While she would be able to defeat Manu and Kishina, Minato was another matter. She could still damage them both physically and by reputation. However instead of answering she simply stood up and slowly walked away. Making the final three visibly relaxed. I never thought that I would see the clan my ancestors worked so hard to create fall to this level. To think that you would only take back your son for only enslavement and breeding material. The Namika's clan I once knew is dead. I'm ashamed of what's left. Minato and Kashina didn't show it, but they flinched inside. I'm sorry grandma, but it was necessary, it will all work out you'll see. Minato tried to apologize. So am I, she said, confusing them. To think you were my grandchild Minato. The little boy who would promise me to make me proud of him. You're not that boy. No more I hereby disown you as my grandchild. My son, your father, bless his soul, would be ashamed of you Minato. Her declaration made Minato and his uncle flinch as they felt a slight pang of hurt in their chest. Their expression didn't show it, but the pain they felt inside from her words couldn't be hidden. Once outside Kushi moved to the gardens and watched a fish swim in a pond. They were all gliding along the water creating a dance that was peaceful in the old woman's mind. How the mighty have fallen. She said to herself. Suddenly a feeling was blowing in the wind as a shadowy figure dropped from the roof of the compound. This man was a tall man with short brown hair dressed in anbu gear. Except this anbu gear was far different, the uniform the figure wore bore the emblem of root on it. Kushi felt the chakra signature and turned around. I had a feeling you would be here Kushi said quietly so as not to attract any attention. Any information from the Namika's clan? The man asked. Yes, the clan has agreed on making the child Naruto a breeding mare for the Mokuten. They want Naruto to be trained to become the side branch clan head and learn minor ninjutsu and some few ninjutsu. The clan sees Naruto as a way to more prestige and power. That's all they see of him as even his parents do. Kushi seed. Your info is bountiful. You've done well, Kushi. Your husband Danzo will be most pleased. The root agent smirked. Thus promise me one thing she asked. If Hashirama send you, yes I know Danzo, send me a private letter telling me everything does anything. Please ask him to spare the younger generation of the clan if he decides to kill off the clan. I'll pass on the message Kushi-sama he said, vanishing from the spot. Danzo dear, I hope you know what you're doing, Kush thought to himself. On Hagakur, deep underground of the village in the root headquarters lots of activity was going on. First Hiruzen was overseeing the re-education of the root shinobi forces. Their education re-educated them to become more human with emotion and other things. Their skills were still unquestionable in the shinobi arts. Hashirama was meeting with Danzo as they were discussing Root's new place within the village. Danzo Root will become Kanoha's special underground private Anbu division. Any shady missions will be given to them since I found out they are the best in their field. Hashirama said. That will be fine sensei, Danzo agreed. But what about village loyalty? We have to ensure our shinobi stay loyal to the village. That tongue seal of yours will be allowed since it prevents them from speaking or spilling secrets. However I want it moderated so that only the person who placed the seal on can remove it. Agreed Hakage-sama. Soon right on time a root agent arrived and knelt before Danzo and Hashirama. Lord Danzo, Hashirama, we have returned from the mission with success. The agent said. Any information you obtained from my wife Kushi? Danzo asked. Hi, he replied. What did she find out? Hashirama asked. Anbu revealed everything from what Kushi told him. Apparently the clan was going to bring Naruto back to breed the Mokuten and have him marry his own cousin and rule the side branch and be trained in jutsu required by clan law. Meaning Naruto was just what Minato wanted. A support ninja with mediocre skill. Danzo was outraged at his grandson, yes that's right Danzo is Minato's paternal grandfather. To think his grandson would sink this low. True Minato was never told he was his grandfather. But he made sure he would be there for him growing up. Now the old warhawk couldn't bear to even call Minato his grandson. Hashirama was a whole different matter. Hashirama was infuriated that the Yandane truly felt so little for his former son. Time for waiting was over, the time for action was now. He asked for one of the root Anbu to bring Mito to the underground. It was time for planned genocide to be enacted. The Anbu nodded and vanished. A few minutes later he arrived with Mito. They explained the whole thing, and Mito accepted the mission that her husband had given her. Mito, you know what to do, Hashirama said coldly. 
Yes, Hakage-sama, I know full well what I must do. Nido said calmly. To exterminate the Namika's clan. You leave immediately and if Minato or any of his family see you. Make sure to leave an impact. Hi, she said. But now go, Naruto's future hangs in the balance. Hashirama commanded. Nido, prepare yourself Namika's clan, here comes Mido Senju Uzumaki. Namika's clan compound, a sound of silence filled the complex as everyone was either resting or walking through the streets. Sounds and laughter were heard as they had no idea that death was coming for them. Minato and Kashina were in their house with Menma, Jiraiya, and Swan. They were sharing laughs and memories as they had a delicious lunch. Nothing could ever ruin this night, right? Ooh, oh, they were wrong. Mido soon stood atop the entrance arch of the Namika's compound, she was dressed in her battle kimono instead of Anbu gear. Her expression of coldness and hatred was well hidden as she slowly drew her blade from the scabbard on her back. Nido snuck through the shadows as she entered the compound. Entering the first house she cut down the man and woman quickly before they could scream. For the children she flung two kunai hitting them both through the neck, giving them a merciful death. She moved quickly from house to house until she was located and an amicus woman screamed, getting everyone's attention until she was beheaded. Many screamed again as bodies were on the ground, covered in their blood. The people ran in multiple directions. Nido sped through the street slicing the backs and fronts of all those that stood in her way, she killed a couple of civilians that wasn't aware of what was going on, but she paid it no mind, as a former Kanoichi she was used to killing those that weren't supposed to witness something that was not supposed to be witnessed, and massacring the Namika's clan was not supposed to be witnessed. Noticing some were running to warm Minato and Kashina she jumped and threw some kunai and shuriken at other ninjas and civilians in the street. After cutting down the last adult in the clan, she dodged a kunai that was tossed at her. She caught the sight of Minato with Swan, Jiraiya, and Kashina at his side. Who are you? And why have you killed the Namika's clan? Minato demanded. My name is of no importance. Only for the safety of Naruto, the Namika's clan must be killed. She said in a cold tone. Anoha ordered this. Kashina gasped. I don't believe this, Minato gasped. Believe it Minato, we received word of your plans for my son from a spy within your clan. Spy? Jiraiya asked. Because she said, coming out of the shadows. Rama. You sold us out Minato cried. Why? This clan had fallen from grace a long time ago. I couldn't bear to see that anymore. So yes I sold the clan out and for good reason. Well said, Mito laughed. Wait, you said your son, so you're the wife of the new Hakage. Show yourself then show yourself Yuzumaki. Kashina demanded. The moonlight shined through the clouds as the woman stepped forward. Kashina and Swan gasped at who she saw. No way, Kashina gasped, covering her mouth. Grandma Mito. Swan cried. Who are you? And why have you killed the Namika's clan? Minato demanded. My name is of no importance. Only for the safety of Naruto, the Namika's clan must be killed. She said in a cold tone. Hanoha ordered this. Kashina gasped. I don't believe this, Minato gasped. Believe that Minato, we received word of your plans for my son from a spy within your clan. Spy? Jiraiya asked. Because she said, coming out of the shadows. Rama? You sold us out, Minato cried. Why? This clan had fallen from grace a long time ago. I couldn't bear to see that anymore. So yes I sold the clan out and for good reason. Well said, Mito laughed. Wait, you said your son, so you're the wife of the new Hakage. Show yourself then show yourself Yuzumaki. Kashina demanded. The moonlight shined through the clouds as the woman stepped forward. Kashina and Swan gasped at who she saw. No way, Kashina gasped, covering her mouth. Grandma Mito. Swan cried. Ending previous chapter, words couldn't even describe what Tsunade and Kashina were feeling right now. Standing before them were the legendary Kanoichi Mito Yuzumaki Senju herself. But how could it be? She was supposed to be dead after she transferred the Kaiubi and Kishina. But here she was in front of them with the blood of the Namika's clan spattered over her body. How can this be? You can't be here, you're dead. You died when you sealed Kaiubi into me, Kishina shouted. I can assure you, Kishina, this is not an illusion. I'm living flesh and blood and I've come here to personally deal with you myself. Mito replied harshly, making Kishina flinch. This must be the reanimation jutsu, someone must be controlling you, Tsunade said quickly. No one is controlling me, Tswand. I'm here on my own free will. Then why are you here? And why kill my clan? You had no right to come here and spill the blood of my clan, Minato shouted, gritting his teeth. Mito snorted at Minato's tough guy demanding attitude. If there was one thing people know it's not to demand of her anything. She sheathed her sword back into its scabbard and stared them down, as if she wasn't even phased by them. The reason I am here is because of the Shinigami. Mito replied to Minato's question. Shinigami? What does the death goddess have to do with this? Minato asked, sweating heavily. She found out you abandoned Naruto for a prophecy from the toads about a child who would bring the cycle of hatred to an end. Apparently she became furious and was considering taking your soul. 
Nido smirked, taking in the smell of their fear. Bonado and Jurea began to sweat. They didn't realize that they pissed off the Death Goddess. Then it hit them straight in the balls, the Death Goddess interfered with their plans for Naruto. She was the reason Naruto was taken from them. She did this. Minato gasped, getting everyone else's attention. The Death Goddess took Naruto from us. Why would she do that if we didn't do anything wrong? Kashina cried. You abandoned your own blood. You chose Menma over Naruto. I taught you better than Kashina Mito shouted, raising her voice. From a very young age I taught and branded in your head the sacred oath of the clan and what it means to truly be in Yuzumaki. Mito sama I am in Yuzumaki. I did this to protect him. Kashina shouted until Mito slapped her across the face. You threw him away like he was nothing. Mito screamed at her. You saw him as an unimportant boy because he wasn't the child mentioned in your little prophecy. No, Kashina said, only to be interrupted. You didn't do it to protect him. You did it because you believed Memma was more important. You didn't want to take Naruto with you because he was just a distraction to you. Stop it, Kashina cried. You threw away an innocent little baby that you carried for nine months. You went along with that bastard without giving a second thought about Naruto. Shut up, I love my son, Kashina screamed. If you loved him you would have taken him with you. If you loved him you would be there for his first words, first steps, first injury. If you loved him you should have been the mother you were supposed to be. Mito shouted louder, making Kashina drop to her knees. Shut up. Shut up. Kashina cried louder, gripping her head. You became such a failure that the death goddess herself decided to give Naruto to a real Yuzumaki, someone who would be the mother that you failed to be. Kashina cried into her hands until her eyes ran red. Minato quickly rushed to his wife's side and pulled her into a hug. He glared up at Mito as he leaked killer intent towards her only for the woman to shake it off. Swan stepped forward to confront her now resurrected grandmother, only for Mito to point her kunai at her face. The Utsunade are the one I'm most ashamed of. Mito said, turning her head to face her granddaughter. I stood by my family Bachan. I did what you taught me when I was young, and that was to stand by my family. Tsunade said. You didn't even convince Minato to take Naruto with him. You let it happen. You failed as a grandmother, as a senju, and Yuzumaki. Mito scoffed. I didn't fail at anything. I really wanted to take Naruto with us. But after Jiraiya and Minato explained the whole thing. I thought it might have been a good idea. A good idea? Mito said, her eyes twitching. A good idea to abandon a child, make them think you are dead. Suddenly coming back 13 years later as if nothing happened. Did you even think about how Naruto would react to this? Did you even think about the dangers this plan of yours would have on the poor boy's mental state? Please botch and I know you're angry because of Naruto. But killing off the Namika's clan isn't the answer. Swan tried to reason with her. You think Naruto is the reason for all this? Mito seed. Is that what you think? You killed off the clan because of him, said Jiraiya. And I did this to protect him from what you had planned for him. Naruto is a sweet little boy, not some breeding stallion for a clan whose sole purpose is to breed the Mokuten. No, I did it because I'm Naruto's mother. And as his mother I would do everything I can to protect him. What would Grandpa say if he saw you right now? Tsunade angrily shouted. Ashurama would side with me on this one. Mito said, walking towards Tsunade. Hashirama knows what it means to be a parent. You know why. I'll tell you why. He never bent over to fate like you all did. Prophecies are loads of crap, we don't follow the words of something that is years if not centuries old. You may be a fat bitch, but I'm not. I'll have you arrested with clan genocide. Minato said standing up with his wife holding on to him. I'll have the fire daimyo have your head. My clan was close to the daimyo, not to mention they were his private anbu division. You think you can threaten me? Mito chuckled. I don't want to do this to my village. But since they ordered the execution of my clan then I will make sure justice is served. Minato promised her. So you're saying that you and your clan wanted to not only take Naruto away from Konoha. But also put Naruto under a breeding program, since Naruto will have a high chance of inheriting the Mokuten. A clan who would strip the freedom of a little boy for what? To be branded and controlled. To be a slave to some main branch. Oh I'm sure your daimyo would love to hear about that since Kushi here was present in your meeting. I can't believe you would sell us out. I thought the clan meant something to you. Minato shook his head in disbelief. It did a long time ago, Kushi answered sadly. But from what I have seen in my years so far. I'm ashamed of it. I leave you all with a warning Mito threatened. Stay away from Naruto. He's mine now. Cross my path again and you'll be joining the number of bodies that lay scattered around the compound. Kashina charged towards Mito before anyone could stop her in a saddened rage, I'll kill you. Mito allowed Kashina to get close before delivering a punch to the woman's stomach. Kashina grunted, coughing out saliva as she clutched her belly and fell back to her knees. She looked up at Mito who was glaring down at her. The Yuzumaki matriarch unleashed so much killer intent that it scared Kashina. She couldn't move a muscle because of it.
Leonardo charged in to help his wife with a Rasengan ready in his hand. Nido vanished from her position and delivered a kick to his back, sending him into a crater in the ground. Leonardo. Jiraiya yelled as he charged in. Fire style. Oil burning jutsu. Oil surrounded Nido as the set it ablaze. Nido jumped into the air and unleashed a tidal wave of water which extinguished the flames. She went toe to toe with both. She blocked and managed to subdue Jiraiya with few jutsu, but her granddaughter was on a whole different level. She was impressed with her granddaughter's medical jutsu. Tsunade managed to grab Nido and send her flying across the ground with a super punch. Nido grunted as she dug her feet into the ground. She looked up and saw Tsuan bringing down another punch. The Yuzumaki dodged as she managed to cut Tsunade's side, making her bleed out a bit. Tsunade clutched her wounded side as she felt a sword to her neck. Nido raised her sword to deliver a decapitated blow only for her to sheath her blade. You're not worth killing she said before knocking her out with a single chakra infused punch. Nido turned back to Kashina who was shivering in fear from Nido's killer intent. The matriarch knelt down before cutting Kashina's cheek, a kanji for traitor. She then used her chakra to burn it into her skin, making Kashina scream. I branded the traitor sealing mark into your skin. I won't forget it until I kill you. You'll be all I'll think about Nido said, motioning to Kushi. Kushi came up behind Kashina and bashed her cane over her head, knocking the Namika's matriarch out. Kashina's vision became blurry as she fell to the ground. Minato grunted as he tried to stand up. How dare they attack his wife. He got out his Horatian kunai and tossed them in many directions. Nido went on the defensive as Minato vanished from sight. Nido drew her sword and began blocking his attacks from all directions. She received a few blows until she went through hand signs and placed a seal on Minato's back when she appeared behind him. The seal paralyzed him as he fell to the ground. Gareya was about to attack when Minato told him to stay back. It was his fight and he was going to avenge his fallen clan members no matter what. He tried to get up when he noticed Mito was walking away with Kushi. Stop Minato shouted, but they didn't even listen and kept walking. By the time Minato managed to stand up he saw the two of them vanish through a seal on the ground. He asked Jiraiya to inspect the seal and confirmed it was a reverse summon seal. The seal immediately burned off the ground as black flames engulfed it. Whoever made this seal must have been a powerful seal master. And they got away Minato growled, tightening his fist grip. I'll make you pay bitch hear me. I'll make you pay. He assisted his wife and mother and managed to get them into the main compound building to rest. Menma was informed of the whole situation and like his father vowed to make the Yuzumaki woman pay. Afterwards Minato asked Jureya what the casualties were. Only 20 Namikazes are left Minato, 3 adults, and the remainder are children under the age of 4. Including Minako and her daughter. Jureya said. It's strange that Mito left some of the clan alive. I bet Kushi asked for Mito to spare the younger generation. Minato thought. The only question is what to do now. We could go to the daimyo, but with Kushi turned traitor and Kanoha having the info of the clan meeting there isn't much we can do. I think all this happened because of one kid Jiraiya chuckled. The gods must really hate you. I know that but we can still benefit from this, Minato said. How so? The toad sage asked. Since Kanoha had killed off my clan. I can demand compensation from the men demand the return of Naruto. If they try to refuse, the daimyo can ensure they follow through or the village will suffer. Plus the next Hakage will have to put the village first like all Hakages do. If he wants to prevent the village from losing either funding or other privileges, then they will have no choice but to comply. That's genius Minato. I see I trained you well Jiraiya praised. I'm a Namaka's sensei. And one of the greatest shinobis in the world. Minato boasted. On Hagakur, Ladara was overseeing Sasuke's training as he was practicing the hand signs for the Phoenix Flower Jutsu. The boy was a quick learner, but he kept using too much chakra in his attacks. He instructed Sasuke to use chakra in portions instead of one big clump in one single attack. Itachi was overseeing the training, and he was really proud at how Sasuke turned out. At first Itachi was worried that Sasuke was going to become like their father. But it seems that honor went to Satsuki who was training under the elders. Again Sasuke Madara said as Sasuke went through hand signs. Higher style phoenix flower jutsu. Sasuke shouted using a small bit of chakra required as he spit out many small fireballs at the dummy. Madara smiled in satisfaction as he saw how precise and powerful it was. Sasuke believed in improvement and not relying too heavily on powerful techniques. The Achiha air panted as he checked his progress and saw he made some pretty good improvement. Madara clapped and gave a real smile. A smile that showed he was proud of his student. But now let's move on to Tajutsu, come at me with everything you got, Madara smirked. Sasuke charged Madara and chucked kunai and shuriken at him which he deflected instantly. The Achiha soon swung his leg to his chest only for Madara to block it and push him back. Again Madara shouted as Sasuke charged again, this time planning his attacks carefully. Sasuke continued to throw every punch and kick he could at the only to be blocked at every turn. 
He jumped back and three more shuriken and did the hand signs for the multiple shuriken clone jutsu. He also threw smoke bombs which made Madara cough. Sasuke delivered a kick to his back, sending him to the ground. Madara managed to stay on his feet as Sasuke punched him across the face. Sasuke smirked, but that soon to be frowned when Madara grabbed him by the foot and pinned him down. I'm impressed by Sasuke. You continue to surprise me each and every day since I met you. Madara praised him. Keep this up and you'll be like me one of these days. Sasuke smiled as he basked in the praise of his hero and mentor. Meanwhile we find our cute little blonde in his mindscape training with Kagaya. They were engaged in a battle as Kagaya had him on the ropes. Naruto managed to land a kick, but it had no effect. Kagaya sent a roundhouse kick to Naruto's midsection, sending him a few feet away. Naruto was covered in bruises as he tried to stand up. He charged her again and ran hand signs for the water bullet jutsu. Kagaya smacked them away with her hands and blocked Naruto's punch. She then punched him back as he hit the ground with a poof. Shadow clone. She said as she saw two Naruto's in back of her. They each fired a water bullet as they hit their mark only for them to be pierced by wood. They crumbled away as they were revealed to be clones too. She then heard a vibration from under her as the real Naruto sprang up from the ground and delivered a punch to her chin, sending her into the air. She grunted in pain as she floated in the air looking down at her pupil with a smirk. That's enough for now Naruto-chan Kagaya said. Your tojutsu is average, your ninjutsu is at least C rank. You're showing great promise. Thanks Kagaya-san Naruto bowed. Can we check my affinity now? Naruto you already know you have every affinity. Kagaya reminded him. Let's move on shall we? I can see you've been using shadow clones to help you a lot in other fields. Hi since shadow clones can help you learn things a bit quicker. Naruto answered. Alright then since you've been doing so well. I'm going to teach one of my special moves. It's called Shira Tensei. Kagaya smiled. Kagaya faced a training dummy as she made a swish moment with her hand, sending a blast of mighty wind, turning the dummy into splinters. Naruto was in awe of that. He couldn't wait to try that move himself. The goddess then asked Naruto to come over. The boy obeyed as she instructed him to gather his chakra and draw it into his hand and unleash it in one swish of the wrist. Betting the idea Naruto gathered as much chakra as he could as he made a swipe movement with his hand. Shinra Tensei he shouted as he sent a bit of powerful wind obliterating the forest landscape, revealing a very unhappy Kaiubi who was trying to take a nice quiet bath in the river. Ooh sorry Kurama. He apologized. All I asked was for some peace and quiet for a few minutes Kurama groaned. And you mess it up by blowing up the forest. Ooh don't be such a sourpuss Kurama Kagaya sighed. You keep acting like that and you'll be as arrogant and cold as Madara. I'm nothing like those red-eyed bastards, Kurama roared. These Kurama you don't have to throw a temper tantrum Naruto groaned, cleaning out his ears. You want to see what real anger looks like Kurama growled. Thanks but no thanks Kurama Naruto chuckled. I know better than to piss off the king of the demons. Kurama smirked with a him you got that right brat. Now since you have no control over your god chakra yet. I think it's time for some survival training from me. And believe me I'm not going to make this easy for you. I wouldn't expect you to, Naruto laughed. But because the next few days are going to be hell for you, Kurama laughed sinisterly. True to his word Kurama placed Naruto through training that would not only increase his stamina, chakra reserves, and strength. But it also trained his mental state as well. For the past week Naruto had to do 300 sit-ups, 500 pull-ups, 400 push-ups, and ran around the whole village 20 times with weight seals on his body every morning. Sometimes Naruto wondered who was worse at Kurama's training or training with Madara himself. Of course unlike Madara Kurama allowed him two-hour breaks twice a day. Kagaya or as Naruto calls her Kagaya-chan or Moonlight as her nickname trained him to purify his godlike chakra so that it would safely enter his own chakra network. Okay Naruto in order for my chakra to enter your own network, your own chakra must purify it. Kagaya explained. Okay but Kagaya-sama isn't your chakra the same as everything else? Naruto asked. You are the mother of chakra after all. Chakra comes in many different forms from Naruto. Take the tailed beasts for instance, their chakra is wild and untamed. It's a form of nature chakra. Yet it feels godlike due to them being born from my own chakra. But at the same time it's dangerous since nature can't be tamed. Now human chakra is more different, it's more spiritual energy than nature. Now my chakra is godlike and purified, thus making it white. Do you understand now? I kind do Kagaya-sama, Naruto replied. Alright now let's try letting some of your god chakra pour into your own chakra pools. Naruto nodded as he took a deep breath as he opened his chakra pathways. The white chakra was pooled in Naruto's heart, since the heart represents the very essence of the person. The white chakra slowly bit by bit poured into the pathways. His own blue chakra sensing the foreign chakra tried to fight against it. Suddenly the two chakra clashed and it brought forth pain never before imagined. Naruto screamed but still kept his concentration trying to purify the chakra. 
Kagaya told him not to force the purification and to let it flow. Naruto's body felt like a war zone between two chakra natures, mortal and godlike power. It hurt so damn bad, Naruto grunted. It seems your body is at war with itself. You must try to let your chakra allow the godlike one to merge with it. The more your body resists it the more it will hurt. Naruto dealt with the pain for a solid 45 minutes until the pain stopped. The excruciating pain finally ended as his body felt calmer and warmer. The chakra he got from Kagaya started to flow freely through his network. Kagaya looked at Naruto as she noticed white chakra started to leak out and engulf him. Naruto opened his eyes as his once blue eyes turned a good solid white. The moon goddess smiled, the chakra was taking effect. The boy was starting to show tiny traits of her own clan. His human chakra was starting to purify his godlike chakra. How do you feel? She asked. Strange. I feel like a new person. Naruto answered. The chakra feels warm, pure, and powerful. Just make sure you don't become consumed by it like I did, Kagaya warned him. Don't worry about moonlight. I swear to you I won't become a power-hungry demon. Um, no offense. Naruto chuckled. Non-taken, Kagaya sighed. Well we trained enough for today. Why don't you hang out with your friends for a while? Really? Naruto whined. Because I was hoping we could spend the day together. You and me. I'm not sure the world is ready for me yet, Kagaya said nervously. I mean I once tried to eliminate mankind. Naruto moved closer to her and held her face in his hands, making her look at him. You're not that person anymore. Kagaya wanted to believe him truly. But mankind fears what they don't understand, and she knows that mankind both fears and respects her. But they mostly fear her. Naruto begged her to at least spend one day with him outside of his mindscape. After much consideration and begging from our unpredictable but cute little Ritid. She finally agreed and asked for temporary control of his body. Naruto asking why was told she would need to control his body which will allow her to summon herself. Agreeing to the request, Kagaya took over the boy's body and channeled the chakra that the boy had to such a level, it would be enough to summon her. Summoning Jutsu Kagaya Naruto shouted, going through hand signs. A puff of smoke appeared as Kagaya stood in her mortal form. The same form she was in before she became the rabbit goddess. She stood at a height of 5 feet and 10 inches tall. She had snow white hair and pale white eyes. Her lips were luscious red, and her skin was soft and fair. She wore a high-colored himekimono which had tama running down the center and edges of the gown and adorned with intricate gold and purple lines. She did not have her rabbit ears, but she looked as beautiful as any celestial goddess. Naruto shook his head after he came back too, and he looked in awe at Kagaya and all her beauty. Moonlight is that you? Naruto stuttered. Yes Naruto-chan it's me she laughed. You said you wanted to spend time together. Well now you get to. Naruto got to his feet as he took her hand and headed out of the forest and towards the village. He couldn't wait to introduce her to everyone. He was sure they were going to like her. Hanahagakur. Market District. Kagaya walked with her student to the village market when she noticed some looks from the people around them. However she noticed that they were directed at Naruto and many of them were wondering who his new friend was. Many of the men were jealous that a kid was friends with a beautiful woman like her. Whereas the women were jealous of the sheer beauty she had. They would kill to have a body like hers. She did her best to ignore them because she didn't want to ruin the moment for Naruto. She smiled seeing how happy he looked at the moment. He wanted to make sure that their day was the best one she ever had. She sensed that the villagers greeted her student with respect. Ever since the renouncement of the Yandane, Naruto's father Hashirama announced Naruto as the savior of the village for containing the Kaiubi. He told the village that Naruto will be able to befriend the Nine Tails and together they would protect the village for generations to come. About 98% of the villagers praised him for it, but 2% hated the boy for holding the beast that killed their loved ones. Kagaya wondered how Naruto could still be happy and outgoing, knowing a small part of the village lives to kill him. It was a mystery to her. Hey Kagaya-sensei? He asked her. How oh, yes Naruto? She asked. I'm going to take you shopping. A pretty lady like yourself needs some new clothes, jewelry, and other women's stuff. He chuckled. Kagaya smiled down at him before responding. Oh Naruto you don't have to go and do that. She told him. I appreciate the gesture. But you don't have to spoil me. I know, he replied before looking ahead while they walked. But you did so much for me and this is your first time out in the fresh air in centuries. You deserve it. I want to repay you for all your gifts and your friendship. She looked back down at him in response. All right Naruto if you insist. Naruto smiled as he took her hand and led her to the greatest clothing store in the district. More people would continue to stare at them, or more accurately at Naruto. Some of the villagers near the store just sneered at the boy. You could see the look of distaste and disgust upon their face as they noticed the demon boy as they called him coming towards the store. They were also angered that a pretty woman like that would associate with his kind. Hey demon, what do you think you're doing showing your face at my grandmother's store? The man yelled. I thought I told you to never show your face here again. 
Naruto winced at the tone of the man but stood his ground. Kagaya, however, wasn't liking this man's attitude towards her student. Excuse me, sir, but I would advise you not to speak to my student in such a manner. Kagaya said in a cold tone. I demand you apologize. What? Apologize. The man scoffed. Lady, don't you know who this brat is? He's the Kaiubi incarnate. The demon who destroyed our village all those years ago. You honestly expect me to believe that this boy is a 700 foot fox with nine tails. A demon with the power to create tsunamis and level mountains with a swipe of its tails. Kagaya scoffed. The Yandane defeated the beast by sealing it into a human form to make it weak. And we the proud citizens of Konoha will see to it that the demon knows its place in this village. The man's companion boasted proudly. The guy in out her eyes as she waved her arm to the side and blew the two men through the glass window of the store. The people inside screamed as the men came crashing through. The two guys coughed as they got back to their feet. Kagaya stepped into the store only this time she wasn't going to show any mercy to these men. She held out her left hand as the men levitated into the air. The two of them screamed in fear as they soon felt the air around them getting drier. They began to cough as they felt the oxygen level going down. Gasping for air they flayed around and struggled trying to escape. Kagaya grasped her hand into a fist, making it more painful for them as the boastful villagers felt their bones break. They couldn't even scream due to the suffocation. She felt a tug on her dress as she looked down at Naruto. Kagaya stopping there is not worth it. Let them go Naruto begged Kagaya. You told me never let others get under your skin. Don't let them get under yours. Kagaya sighed before she released them from her jutsu. The men dropped to the ground as they coughed feeling fresh air returning to them. One of the men looked up at Kagaya. You're just like him, he said angrily but fearfully. You're a demon like he is. You're his demon whore. The man took out his kunai and charged towards them. From the looks of it he was going after the boy. Going into overprotective motor eyes went wide as a blast of invisible chakra pushed him back a little. You will not harm the boy, she shouted. Don't back down, the man shouted. Right, said his companion. The man growled as he and his friend charged the two of them again. Only this time Kagaya released her chakra again and the two men exploded into a pile of blood and bones. Naruto was shocked at what happened as was everyone else. The villagers were scared at how powerful this woman was. She looked at Naruto and apologized for her actions. Naruto couldn't blame her for this one, the men attacked and pushed her buttons too far. It was their own fault. It's okay Kagaya-sensei, it wasn't your fault. Naruto sighed. Though killing them was more of a mercy than punishment. Kagaya and Naruto continued into the store where the owner greeted them. Kagaya apologized to the old woman for her behavior, but the old lady told her it was no problem. You have nothing to worry about my dear. My grandson wasn't the brightest man in the world and his father's prejudice didn't help either. The old woman sighed. I can even tell the difference between a kunai and a scroll. Thank you madam you're so kind Kagaya thanked her. No problem, now let's get you some new clothes. Apparently that kimono you're wearing might need to be cleaned to get all those blood stains out. She chuckled. Kagaya was given many new clothes to try on. There were so many to choose from especially in the time and age. She finally settled on a nice spring green dress. Naruto thought she was even more beautiful. He purchased her lots of fine jewelry. He got her some makeup, but he believed her beauty alone didn't need makeup as it was pure already. Kagaya had her hair and a long ponytail with a sapphire and diamond barrette in her hair. Kagaya still thought all of this was unnecessary, but Naruto still spoiled her with his allowance. After paying for the clothes and jewelry, Naruto took Kagaya to his favorite restaurant at Chiraku Raymond. He told her that it was the food of the gods. But Kagaya would be the judge of that. They headed to the restaurant, and Naruto was greeted by A.M. and her father Tuchi. Hey Naruto, A.M. smiled. The usual like always. Hey A.M. Nichan and not today. I would like a Mizo Raymond please. A large bowl to split with my sensei here. How oh so we finally get to meet the sensei that Naruto's been talking about Tuchi smiled. Name's Tuchi and that's my daughter A.M. My name is Kagaya. The goddess introduced herself. Nice to meet you both. The Raymond came out 10 minutes later as A.M. gave them their chopsticks. Naruto and Kagaya thanked her and dug into their lunch. It was tasty, Kagaya had to admit. She hadn't really tasted anything so good before. What do you think of Kagaya-sensei? Naruto asked. It's delicious Naruto, she smiled back. Hehehe <laughs> see I told you. Food of the gods Naruto laughed digging and more. Hey Naruto. Kiba shouted as he came in with his friends. Oh hey Kiba, hey guys what's up? Naruto asked. We were coming to get you. We wanted to know if you'd like to head out to the Akamichi barbecue with us. Hinata asked. I'd love to thank you guys, but I'm busy hanging out with Sensei today. Maybe another time? Naruto rubbed the back of his head, chuckling. Sensei? Shikamaru asked. He means me, Kagaya said, getting everyone's attention. Whoa who's the babe? Kiba smiled. This is Kagaya, she's a friend of mine. She's been training me for a while now. 
Pleasure to meet you all. Hello my name is Hinata Hayuga. I'm Kiba Inuzuka and this is my buddy Akamaru Kiba grinned and Akamaru barked. What a drag I'm Shikamaru Nara and that's my buddy Choji Akamichi. I'm Shino Aburam, my bug sense your chakra level. You're on god level aren't you? My bugs fear you. I'm Tenten and that's Rock Lee and Niji Hayuga. I'm Satsuki Achiha and that's Asuk. Pleasure to meet all of you. Kagaya greeted her. Suddenly a couple of Anbu appeared as they approached the woman. Naruto noticed they were Kakashi, and Itachi greeted them. Itachi and Kakashi-san, what brings you here? We are here to bring your friend here to the Hakage regarding the incident at the clothing store in the market district. Who oh that, Sensei was just protecting me from a few prejudiced villagers who tried to kill me, Naruto said, defending his Sensei. It's fine Naruto, I can handle this, Kagaya said, getting up. Alright gentlemen shall we? Itachi and Kakashi escorted the woman and Naruto to the Hakage's office. Naruto went along so he could explain to his parents the situation. Hanahagakur. Hakage's office. Ashirama sat in his office chatting with Mido and Kush Namikas about the details of the Namikas massacre. Kushi went into full detail of the clan meeting and the fate that awaited young Naruto when his biological parents came back to claim him. Madara was also there listening to the story. He had to hand it to Mido. He never thought she was even capable of something like this. Are you sure that's what you heard? You're not leaving anything out? Hashirama asked commandingly. Yes Hakage-sama I have left nothing out. Kushi replied firmly. How many of the Namika's clan left Mido? I left Hashirama alive. Most of them were children under the age of four years old. Said Mido. Very well Konoha, thank you for what you had to do Mido-chan Hashirama sighed. I wish it didn't have to come to that. But Minato forced my hand. Kishina and Tsunade know I am alive. And as ordered I left a huge impact on them. Kishina was branded with the traitor seal and Tsunade well I left her alive. I will not judge her yet since she has yet to prove where her loyalties lie. A knock was heard at the door as Itachi and Kakashi came in. Akage-sama the woman as you requested, said Itachi. Thank you Itachi for sending her in. Itachi bowed as Kakashi brought her before them with Naruto behind her. Naruto immediately started to beg them not to punish her. He told them the whole situation that happened at the clothing store. Hashirama listened to his son's explanation of the incident. He sighed leaning back into his chair. He was conflicted on what to do because one this woman saved his son's life from two Kaiubi hating villagers and two he didn't even know who this woman is or where she came from. I appreciate you saving my son, Hashirama thanked her. But I have never seen you before. Would you please tell us your name? The Gaia nodded as she channeled chakra through her body and soon everyone saw a third eye on her forehead. It was a combination of the Rinnegan and the Sharingan. Ladara knew that bloodline all too well. It was the most powerful eye in the world and only one person in existence had that bloodline. Bagai Atsutsuki. Madara said respectfully. Bagai Utsutsuki, never thought I'd get to meet the mother herself in person, Madara said in his usual cold but respectful tone. Madara Ichiha, descendant of Indra and former reincarnation. Kagaya answered before looking at Hashirama. Hakage-sama, so you're the one who rescued my son from some of the more hostile villagers. I thank you for what you've done. Hashirama thanked her. Pleasure is all mine, Kagaya replied. But may I ask Kagaya how are you out of the sea? I was told you were sealed with the Kaiubi on him. Naruto gave me temporary control of his body which allowed me access to my power in his body. This allowed me to summon a clone of myself. Kagai explained. Why would Naruto do that? Madara asked. Naruto may be smart, but when it comes to seals he's not exactly gifted. Naruto wanted me to spend some time out of the sea. To taste the fresh air after so many centuries. I told him I was fine being within the seal, but bring the stubborn boy he is. He wouldn't take no for an answer. I felt bad for her too Sam, said Naruto. It didn't feel right for someone like her to remain a prisoner after years of imprisonment. I mean I'm sure she spent enough time repenting. Naruto is a sweet boy Hakagasama. His heart was in the right place so don't punish him for messing with the seal on his belly. Kagaya said firmly. I'll speak to Naruto about that later, but right now could you tell me exactly what happened? Of course Hashirama, it started when Naruto took me into the village for some shopping. He wanted to spoil me with gifts of clothes and jewelry with his allowance. She said making Naruto blush a little which Madara noticed. Trying to impress your new girlfriend. Madara teased. Hey hey I'm just a kid, Naruto shouted, still blushing red. I was just showing her a good time, that's all. Tsuuuur and I bet all the gifts you bought her were just regular gifts he grinned. Hey at least I can treat a girl to a good time unlike you who couldn't even score a lady like dad did when you were in your prime days, Naruto retorted back at him. You want to say that to my face? Madara shouted getting into Naruto's face. I just did old man Naruto shouted back as lightning crossed between their eyes. Hashirama's face palmed, ooh oh these two. The guy just laughed at the situation and a little spat between Naruto and Madara. Although she had to admit Madara looked pretty cute when he was mad. 
Enough of your squabbling, behave yourself. Naruto I can understand since he's a kid, but you I expect better of you, Hashirama yelled. Madara mumbled as he leaned against the wall with his arms crossed, as Naruto stuck his tongue out at him, making many ticket marks appear on his head, as he growled at the red-headed. I'm sorry Kagaya please continue, after Naruto took me shopping he took me to this cute little store that belonged to a sweet old lady. Two men were hanging around the store, and the way they looked at Naruto told me they were Jinchuriki haters. They threatened Naruto to leave as they told us he wasn't allowed near the store, due to him being a demon. Kagaya growled, gripping her fist. I attacked the men and I was going to kill them, but Naruto stopped me. He believed that killing them wouldn't change anything. But after they opened their big mouths again and attacked Naruto again I got so angry. My bloodline activated and the men exploded in a pool of blood. Naruto looked down, he believed in showing mercy to others even to those who don't deserve it. But Mito, his mother, showed him that sometimes there are people who are beyond mercy and that you'll have to kill those who wish to harm you if you wish to survive. Hashirama understood the situation as he would never forgive anyone who wishes harm upon his son, not even himself if he ever hurt Naruto. The old lady was the grandmother of one of the men I killed. She understood that her grandson was a prejudiced bastard. But I don't understand why she didn't feel sadness over her grandson's death, she saw that he rightfully deserved it, Madara snorted. I know I would if anyone harmed my son, that's the whole report, Hashirama. Kagaya sighed. I suppose I should be punished for killing some of your villagers. Punish you? Hashirama raised an eyebrow. Why would I punish you? You saved my boy from being killed by prejudicial bastards. The guy wasn't expecting such a reaction. I mean sure she saved her student, but she didn't think the Hakage would be so happy that she killed two humans in the most horrific way imaginable. You deserve a reward. Ask anything and you shall receive it Hashirama smiled. And Kagaya and Karama live out of the seal daddy? Naruto asked happily. Naruto it's Kagaya's reward so she decides, actually that's a fine idea. Could Karama and I live outside of the sea? It would do us both good. Especially since 98% of the village believes the Kaiubi will work with Naruto to protect the village. If we remove Karama from Naruto he will die Madara argued. He's got godlike chakra and stamina he will survive. Okay okay let's say we do this then what? If word escapes the village that the Ninetales is free from its host. Naruto will become an even bigger target. I'm not afraid of Uncle Emo, Naruto scoffed. Well there you have it Madara from the mouths of babes Kagaya smirked. Madara groaned as he shook his head. No one listens to him. Why is he even here? He would rather be out on missions killing off enemies or go after that old guy Inoki again from Iowa. But now Kagaya actually wants to have the Kaiubi to be released and live in the village with them. Madara knew one bad thing about this whole thing. When Kaiubi comes out he will come after him due to their past history. Was he terrified? No was he intimidated. Yes after all the Kaiubi was a powerful force of chakra. Are you sure that's what you want because I'm starting to agree with Madara here. Thank you Hashirama at least you got some brains left in that head of yours. Karama is as much a victim as Kagaya is. Naruto argued again. They deserve to be free like we do. Alright come to our compound later tonight and we shall work on releasing you and Kaiubi for real, Hashirama said as Madara hit his head against the wall repeatedly. Thank you Hashirama Kagaya bowed. Naruto, why don't you go play with your friends? Okay bye daddy bye uncle emo. Bye moonlight. He laughed as he left the office. Moonlight? Hashirama asked. My nickname he made for me she chuckled. So how long can your clone last? Madara asked her. As long as I desire, why? Do you like looking at me? She asked seductively, making Madara blush. No of course not Madara stuttered. Hashirama snickered before Madara growled and put him in a headlock. Well I should go boys. Nice meeting you but I better go find Naruto and make sure he stays safe. Kagaya said before she felt a dark presence. The presence she felt was a sort of energy that was meant to bring about pain upon an individual, and she tracked it towards the western part of the leaf village towards the Hyuga compound. Excuse me Hakage, Madara, but I got some business to clear up. She said, narrowing her eyes as she jumped out the window and headed to the western part of the village. After she left Madara was still angry at his old friend for allowing such a dangerous request from Kagaya and Naruto. Why would Hashirama agree to something so stupid Madara growled. I didn't know Naruto would even suggest the idea. Hashirama argued. Madara then bonked him on the head hard, making Hashirama rub his head that now had a giant bump. You still should have said no. You know how valuable the Kaiubi is to every nation. Naruto's going to be in more danger than ever. Then what do you suggest we do? Hashirama screamed. We allow Kurama to live out of the seal, but he will still be connected to Naruto, which will prevent Kaiubi from being sealed or captured by another of the great nations. Um, the Hakage thought. Alright I'll talk to Mito and make the arrangements. In the meantime you should probably get back to the clan. I heard the clan is planning on taking you back as clan head. Ha! Madara scoffed. They can keep their clan head status and shove it up their ass. 
Besides, Itachi will become the new clan head when I re-educate the clan. Don't go into one of your dark and breedy educational methods. Hashirama warned him. No promises Hashirama Madara laughed darkly before vanishing in a swirl of fire. Hayuga compound, the ashy watched as Hinata lunged towards Niji, her arm outstretched, aiming towards a vital, only to be easily deflected by Niji. She stumbled a few steps across the courtyard before turning around and adopting the Jaikin stance. Niji faced her calmly, mirroring her pose. His hand held out, palm upward, beckoned her. Hinata pantsed before she rushed in for another attack. Hinata saw me your form is sloppy, your punches and kicks are too soft to do damage. Niji said harshly. If you expect to run the clan then you need to stop being so meek and soft. It doesn't suit a Hayuga clan head. I know that I'm not as skilled as you dot, but I can still reach my full potential. Hinata said, strongly launching a firm palm towards his chest. Niji dodged her attack a second time, sidestepping neatly at the last second. However, this time he grabbed her arm and jerked it, trying to unbalance her. Hinata twisted her trapped arm to get a hold on his and spun around, tearing off his grasp on her. She grabbed his forearm with her other hand too and used it as a lever to perform a flip so that she stood too close for him to block. Her right elbow darted towards his face, but he bent his head back at an impossible angle, avoiding the blow. She sank to the floor and swept her leg across it trying to unbalance Niji, but he backflipped and his right foot caught her under the chin, sending her sprawling backward. The ashy could see that his meek daughter was improving greatly, slowly but greatly. He was secretly hoping that his daughter would be able to impress the elders so she wouldn't be branded and sent to the branch house. He may be a father and love his daughter, but he also had a duty to the clan. He began to notice that Niji was quite the prodigy in the and the other Hayuga techniques. Even for a branch member he was quite gifted. Meanwhile Kagaya had followed the chakra mass to the main household dojo. Hiding her chakra signature she moved through quietly and managed to peek in through the door. She noticed the two Hayugas sparring. She noticed the girl was a bit off and completely meek. But the boy she noticed was very 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 skilled. Also she noticed their eyes which was one of the bloodlines she had. This boy is quite the prodigy. His skills are impressive for a boy his age. Kagaya thought about watching them. However, the girl needs a lot of work. Her attacks are too soft, it's like she doesn't want to hurt anyone. Please, I know you're angry with the main house since your uncle died. But taking your anger on me and our spars won't bring him back. Hinata begged her cousin. Niji grunted as he tried to keep his anger in check. His father's death was a sour topic for him. He despised and hated the main branch for what happened to his Ashi. He Ashi, his uncle was supposed to be the one to be taken, but instead the clan sacrificed his father in its place. He gripped his fist as he looked back up at Hinata. Activating his Byakugan he charged at Hinata with malicious intent which Hiashi quickly noticed. Acting quickly Hiashi got in front of Hinata and force palmed Niji back a few feet. He then put his fingers into position as he activated the cage bird seal. Niji grunted as he felt like a thousand knives had pierced through his body dipped in salt and alcohol mixed with hellfire. He clawed at his head as he ripped off the bandages from his head, revealing a strange mark with an X in the middle of it. He screamed as his whole body was in excruciating pain. My head my head it feels like it's on fire, Niji cried as he felt like ripping out his hair. Suddenly the door was broken open which broke Hiashi's concentration as he noticed a woman with long white hair rush towards him with such speed as she gripped his left hand and broke his wrist, making him scream. Kagaya noticed what that seal could do and thanks to her godlike ability, she can learn any seal quickly. She immediately slammed her palm against Hiashi's forehead and threw him across the dojo. Father Hinata shouted. The guy immediately performed the cage bird seal sign as he ashi immediately rolled around screaming as he knew that the woman put the cage bird seal on him. But how could she do that? Performing it for six minutes she stopped as she noticed Hayuga's rushing into the dojo. Lord Hiashi. What happened? This woman just placed the cage bird seal on me. I don't know how she did it but kill her. Hiashi ordered as the Hayuga's charged her. The guy got into her battle stance as her eyes turned white with veins around her eyes. Hiashi gasped as he took notice of the eyes as did everyone else. It was the Byakugan. Kagaya immediately charged as she programmed many of the main house Hayugas. She managed to wound some, but to others she went too far by 364 palming three times which killed a few. Knocking the last Hayuga through the wall and decapitating the other, she approached Hiashi and picked him up by his neck. How? How do you have the Byakugan? Who are you? Hiashi demanded. Who I am is no concern, but you can call me Princess Kagaya. I am disgusted to see what the Hayuga clan has become. To treat family with his kind of seal torture. To brand a child. She shouted, boy was she angry. The cage bird seal is to keep the side branch in line and protect the Byakugan. Hiashi justified. So you enslave part of your family to do your job for you? Wow, you really are pathetic. Watch your tongue. Do you realize who you're talking to? 
I'm the head of the Hyuga clan. All I'm talking to is a man who relies on the side branch to protect the Byakugan instead of doing it himself. All this shows me is that the main house is so weak that it needs the side branch to do it for them. How dare you insult the might of the Hyuga clan. In fact you should be branded for attacking me since you're actually a Hyuga. The guy had tightened her grip on Hiyasha's neck, listen here no one seals me, never again she slammed him into the hardwood floor below. Daddy Hinata sobbed. Please madam please leave him alone. Zip your mouth girl this man needs to be taught a lesson in respect. Lady Kagaya, wait Niji said, stepping forward. What do you want kid? My name is Niji and I thank you for saving me. But I'm afraid of the side branch and I still answer to Hiyashi due to clan law and this seal. Niji sighed. Going through one hand hand sign she channeled her chakra to manipulate the chakra in the seal itself. The chakra used to power the seal was overcome with a strange white chakra, which made the seal once a bright grey into a fading white. Kagaya smirked as she tossed Hiyashi aside, making him pass out. Hinata rushed to his side. What did you do? You made hand signs, but it didn't do anything Niji asked. I manipulated the chakra, in that case the bird seal. Don't worry the seal is useless now it will fade. She smiled. Niji didn't believe it as he demanded proof. To prove her point she conjured a small mirror which showed Niji the fading seal. He looked at her in shock, this woman actually managed to free him from his cage. My lady words can't express how happy this makes me, Niji said, getting on his knees bowing. It's a fine child, are there others with that seal? The others you speak of are the side branch. Well then round them up Niji it's time for the birds to be let loose. But Lady Kagaya, what will become of us? You and the side branch will become members of the Utsutsuki clan. I'm the last one of my clan, but I share Hyuga blood, which means you are my remaining family. Niji immediately hugged her which she returned as he took her to the side branch compound where he gathered them all before her. One by one she removed each of their seals and offered them admittance into the Utsutsuki clan. The side branch members agreed shouting and cheering for their newfound freedom. Kagaya smiled as she also announced that Niji will become her heir, her son, her legacy. Niji was quiet in shock and excitement with his new turn in his life. This woman not only saved them from a shackled life, but she's offering to take him in as her son. Packing up the side branch left with Kagaya their new clan head as they left their old life as Hyugas behind. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys in the next video. Till that. Take care.